Hello everyone, welcome to What If Quirkless Deku Awaken Life or Stealing Quirk Part 4. Before we start please go support SilverLion 12k for writing that awesome fanfic. Chapter 54. A few hours after the news of Bakugou and several other juveniles escaping hit public news, Nezu had asked for an immediate faculty meeting with Izuku coming to give his personal opinion on the topic. Since he's known the Ash Blonde for years, Izuku might have been able to tell just how dangerous of a situation they were in. Once everyone was sitting down, the small rodent got to the point that everyone already knew. I'm sure you're all aware of how we may be in danger due to Katsuki Bakugou's escape. Nezu replayed the scene of Bakugou's prison break and revealed the sheer power and destruction he was capable of. I don't think I've seen one of Bakugou's explosions ever cause that much damage without some kind of support. Azawa was curious to this with the image sinking deep into four people. Mr. Midoriya, could you please share in your own personal opinion what may happen here? Izuku was in a daze remembering the blast as the stinging of the sheer force came back to him. Midoriya. He came back to reality when Cementos called him. Oh, sorry. Izuku thought of his past experiences with the blonde before speaking up. Kachin's dangerous, but he isn't stupid. He'll know off the bat that a small group of delinquents won't be able to defeat a school full of pros and heroes in training. He'll most likely gather followers in his ideals and fight only when he knows he can win. This gives us time, but not a lot. So that blast he did, any clue little listener? Sigh sorry mixer, but I don't have a clue. Although the blast scene on video that was shown triggered the memory from when he and All Might fraud AFO, so a council between himself, All Might, and Mirio was needed, since it's a highly possible outcome that AFO has found a new host, but to be sure before he revealed anything he would like to consult those who know the truth behind OFA. Back at the dorm. As Izuku walked back to the dorms after the meeting he was lost in thought about how a manhunt for Katsuki Bakugu was put out. Several pro heroes were working the case along with the police and any detectives they could spare. This was upon the request of All Might who feared a horrible outcome, along with the information they already had on the group he's with. Upon opening the door into the dorms, he was greeted by Ichako, Najire, and Iri worried about his sudden summons to the school. So what happened? Long story short, Kachin is officially the most wanted man in Japan, and not in a good way. Isn't that a little much? Kirishima asked overhearing the conversation for Izuku to give an obscure answer. There were other factors, but it isn't as overdrawn if you think of the fact he's got a small army and power of a grenade at his fingertips. Izuku picked up Yuri before walking over to the couch and sitting down. The girls followed and took one of his shoulders as they decompressed from the gravity of the situation that's unfolding as they speak. Before he could get too comfy though, his phone vibrated to make the green-haired boy reach in his pocket and grab it. It was a message from Mario. Sorry to ask you this right after the meeting you had, but can you meet up with me later this evening at Sir's office? Him and All Might want to talk to us about you know who. Izuku replied back to agree before leaning back and enjoying his little family time. Are things gonna get tougher? Achako asked with Izuku nodding. Yeah. Please if you both ever go outside, be careful. Kachin doesn't forget grudges and will hold them for a long time. Najair leaned in to kiss his cheek and give a smile. We'll be okay Izuku. We aren't weak enough to sit back and allow that to happen. Najair's right, have some faith things will be okay. Izuku wanted to believe them, but something in his mind was telling him to not let his guard down. Please let this just be me being paranoid instead of a warning. I don't want either one of them involved in something like this. Izuku waited until the meeting time was near and asked Ichako if Iri could spend the night with her in case he didn't come back soon. She didn't mind this, but asked why to be told that there was a meeting the green-haired boy had to go to that might take a little time. Ichako understood and told Iri that she was going to spend the night in Izuku's room with her for the small girl to be happy that her mother was going to sleeping beside her. Izuku left about a half an hour after this to the gates of Yue, where Mirio and All Might were already waiting for him. The three were silent for the most part until getting to Night Eye's agency where he and Gran Torino were waiting. Night Eye Agency. Once the necessary members were there they began the meeting without wasting any time. First off let's discuss the escape of Katsuki Bakugou Night Eye started off as he played the video of the explosion over and over, hoping to find a clue. Immediately, All Might and Izuku saw the difference between Bakugou's attack and what his explosions normally are, right here I can tell that isn't Kachin's attack. How do you know, kid? Izuku froze the screen when it came to the aftereffects of the blast to bring everyone's attention to two things. First off, no smoke came out of Kachin's hand. When he'd give a huge explosion like this, there'd be some kind of smoke coming off of his hand due to the amount of firepower given. The second is the level of this explosion. He'd never be able to do something like this and just walk away. If he'd have his gauntlets from his hero costume, maybe, but that's a stretch in the collateral. This does make sense. 
I had looked into his quirk a bit to find that he wouldn't be able to make these explosions without some kind of recoil shown. To make certain he's not wrong, he asked one final thing. Did any cops get burned from taking the attack? No. There's no doubt in my mind that the attack wasn't explosion then. If you take into the consideration that the former users told me AFO can go into different bodies of people holding pure rage, and the fact this guy was a literal walking time bomb, it makes sense. Mirio pointed this out for All Might to give a deep side out. Why did I ask him to be my successor before young Midoriya? Either way, we need to assume his next moves. Currently he'll be able to hide since many factions in the villain underworld are fighting for dominance right now. Because of this, he'll be able to band together an army of people wanting to fight. When that happens. We will face a larger league of villains. Everyone shuddered at this before Gran Torino spoke. So then let's try and get some dangerous groups off the playing field. We can't stop the new AFO from gaining followers, but we can stop him from getting the extremely dangerous ones. That sounds like probably the best idea we could do right now. Just as a precautionary, Mirio. Night I look towards the third year for his head to pop up. Yes sir? How is your handle of OFA? 48%. 53% for small periods of time. I'd like you to try and raise that control as high as you can. We don't know when we'll meet Bakugu again, so best be on the safe side. Yes sir. As you do that, I'll try and keep my attention to any villains that might be worth looking into. All Might pointed this out for everyone to start leaving. Before he left, Night Eye asked Izuku to stay back a moment. How's Eerie handling new life? She's adjusting the best she can. Chisaki did a number on her though mentally with the girls and I trying to help her the best we can. You realize Bakugou may see her as a target since she's connected to you? Izuku held his head down a bit. I was afraid of that when I first saw the news. Keep a close eye when you leave with her. If anyone strange tries to do something, get her out of the area. Yes sir. Izuku was able to leave after to return to UA just in time to see Iri head off to bed. Once he got inside, he noticed Achako bringing Iri up to his bedroom to tuck her in. He followed to see Achako lay the child down and give her a kiss goodnight. Izuku turned on a small nightlight the girls bought in their travels, with the two walking out the bedroom to let her sleep in peace. When the door shut, Achako handed Izuku a small monitor, so he'd be able to hear if Iri was having a nightmare. How was the meeting? Things are going to get tougher. Had a feeling. Achako glanced at the room before having a bit of fear in her. She'll be fine. I won't let anything happen to you, Najair, or Eerie. I know, it's just unsettling. She might be targeted again for something she shouldn't be in. I know, that's why I'm going to do what I can to prevent that. The two walk downstairs to enjoy some time to themselves and decompress from the stress they were under seeing the news. All they knew was that the trouble they're having now is not going to get any easier. But Bakugou, as the members of the hero faction began to work their next move out, Bakugou and his faction had done the same. So we'll be going to this dock to gain his assistance. From what I've been told, Afo was his personal patient and worked side by side with him. No doubt he'll have some information and stuff we can use. I'm gonna leave talking to him to you idiots. Bakugou passed a burner cell to them so they couldn't be tracked. That phone only has this number on it. You'll have him call where a special guest will make his acquaintance when heard. Bakugou pointed to four other people. You four go find out all the intel you can about this Liberation Army. I heard they're a good group of people. If we can get them to help. Well we'll have more allies than we could get alone and in high places. Bakugou grabbed an overcoat to place on himself and Fedora he found in the abandoned house before walking to the door. Kami, you're with me. The rest of you, go find us some money, food, and useful people. Everyone left the building with Kami walking out with a large coat of her own. Where are we going? There's a guy that I found out about near this area. From what I'm told, he's a real monster. The two went deep into the woods for the sound of an owl to spook Kami a bit. So like, what's this guy doing in the woods? He's not one of those smoke and brimstone lamos, right? He was put out here some time ago. Back before All Might and Afo first really clashed about five years ago. He'll be the key to taking down Deku. How? Where Deku's a leech that sucks the life out of anyone until they're dry, he'll never win against someone who has a limitless amount of life force. Wait, this guy is like Totsa Juggernaut or something. More like nobody can stop him. The only person that could is the man who will give us the power to kill the nerd and put him finally under us. But before we go any farther, I've got something for you. Akigu turned around to place a hand on Kami's head. Afo explained to him how to use the quirk to transfer a specific one over. Once finished, Kami began to make black fire in her hands. That flame can harm someone physically and mentally. Something tells me you'll enjoy making round face scream in pain. Kami looked at the fire before calmly smirking. Oh I will. That hitch thought she was better than me. I'm gonna show her what haters deserve. The two kept walking with the sound of a monster echoing inside the forest. 
When they were in front of the beast, Bakugu let his subconscious go to Afo before the eternal villain introduced the enormous behemoth in front of them. Behold Kami Atsushimi. The being that will give you and Kitsuki Bakugu the vengeance you so rightfully deserve. Gigantamachia. Chapter 55. The following day Izuku woke up with Eerie clinging to his chest. Izuku smiled seeing his little girl when a knock at his door woke her up. Eerie moved from his chest so he could get up and answer the door, as the door opened Eerie saw her mommies, good morning sweetheart, they said simultaneously, good morning mommies, Eerie said through a yawn, as she adorably rubbed the sleep from her eyes. How about we visit grandma and grandpa Eerie's eyes were wide awake after hearing grandma and grandpa, can we? Izuku laughed as he saw his daughter's expression. Of course. But we need to spend a little time at school first. When that's over, we can go meet your grandma and grandpa Yuraka and Hado. I have more than one grandma and grandpa. That's right. Your grandma and grandpa Yuraka are your mommy Achako's mommy and daddy, and your grandma and grandpa Hado are mommy Najires. Yuri's face lit up hearing that she now had four more family members in her family to meet and know. Alright, let's get ready for the morning Yuri. Achako grabbed some clothes for Yuri, while Izuku grabbed his. I'll change in the bathroom. Meet you three downstairs. Okay. Izuku walked down to the first floor of the dormitory to change in the bathroom and wash his face off. While drying with a towel, he looked into the mirror to make sure all the soap on him was off. What he saw however was Bakugu's face in the mirror smirking at him. Ah he jumped back preparing to attack. Relax nerd. I'm only using the mirror to talk to you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Yet. Izuku was enraged to see Bakugu again, but needed to find out where he was. What are you doing in the mirror? I came to tell you that no matter what you do, you'll lose to me. This comment raised an eyebrow on Izuku. And why is that? Because I now have someone who has the power to overcome that pathetic quirk of yours. Izuku knew that Bakugu was arrogant, but he wouldn't flaunt power like this unless he knew for a fact he was superior. So who exactly did you get? Like I'd ruin the surprise. Just be aware that your days are numbered. Those cunts you call women will be broken physically, emotionally, and mentally before they die in front of you. Your hitch of a mother and loser old man will be tortured for what you've done. And that little brat of yours keep Yuri out of this Izuku, lost his nerve at the mention of his daughter, who finally obtained some stability in her life. Well that one I leave as a surprise. Let's just say, that quirk of hers is quite useful. Enjoy your time trying to get stronger Deku. You'll need it. Izuku was in a blind rage to punch the mirror and shatter it. His hand was shaking with anger from what Bakugu said. I'm guessing there's more to this than what I just witnessed. Izuku turned around to see Mr. Azawa standing in the doorframe. How long were you there? Enough to know Bakugu has something to beat you. I don't know what, but finding him now is something we need to take more caution in. Izuku walked out of the bathroom to grab a broom and dustpan, before siphoning the energy out of the broken glass and turning it to dust. Sorry about the mirror. To be honest, I would have done the same thing in your shoes. He not only called you out, he also made threats about the people you care for. No normal person would be sane during that. Azawa walked out of the bathroom to begin heading out. Nezu said to bring Eri to the teacher's lounge. The teachers will help teach her and watch her while you three are in class. Azawa left after this for Izuku to calm his nerves a bit. I need to get stronger. No doubt about it. The green-haired boy went into the kitchen to start a little breakfast for him and his family while trying to calm down a little. Once breakfast was served Izuku was still a bit on edge but knew he couldn't worry his girls. The little family ate and got ready to drop Eerie off at Nezu's office, once there the three said bye to Eerie, and they gave her a kiss before telling her, we'll pick you up during lunchtime. Remember we're going to see grandma and grandpa after school, Eerie waved goodbye to her mommies and daddy. The day went by quickly, but many noticed that he seemed distracted, although he tried to play it off like nothing, but Azawa knew what was eating Izuku. When the day finally ended they picked up Eerie and went to change into casual clothes, but deep down Izuku knew something would happen. With Kitsuki. Bakugu had made his war declaration against Catalyst, but he felt that it wasn't enough Kami get over here, as the sound of footsteps kept getting closer his door was opened, yes Bakugub. She said as she walked into his room, how many of these extras we recruited do you think are really loyal to our cause? Hmm. Depends on how crazy the idea is. I know a good amount just wanna raise hell though. A smirk came on the ash blonde's face. That'll work. I've got a job to really put Deku on edge. Bring four of the toughest psychos we've got. Kami did as she was asked for two juveniles, an ex-pro, and a serial killer to be in front of him. Alright, listen up. I've got a job that will benefit us if you succeed. Bakugu gave a photo of a small girl with silver hair, red eyes, and a horn protruding out of her head. This brat. I want you to take her from the pro-hero catalyst. Preferably to make him know he bucked up. You succeed, and the ones that come back will get a reward. 
The four smiled with a sickening grin as they left for an area Bakugu said they'd be at. Once alone, Kami decided to speak up. So why the kid? I found out she's got a crazy quirk that we can use against Deku or anyone who dares defy us. They can't beat us if they're rewound to the point they don't exist. And if they fail. Main reason they're not a big group. Besides, the main purpose is to screw with Deku's brain a bit. Make him squirm a bit more. Kami started to laugh a bit hearing this. I'm like Uber looking forward to watching the loser fail. Bakugu began getting up to walk near the door. Then let's see what happens. Back with Izuku. Izuku couldn't help but feel like he was being watched, so he made sure to stay on guard, plus he also got accustomed to carry his swords everywhere he went in case of emergency. Once close to his mother and father's home both Achako and Najire had been notified that they were close by as well. As Izuku continued to have that feeling of being watched, but didn't let his girls know something was up, since he didn't want Iri to be afraid after a few minutes more of walking, they reached Inko and Hisashi's home Izuku knocked. When the door opened it was Hisashi Izuku, girls come in they came inside and removed their shoes, dad I have some news for both you and mom, they walked in to see Inko cooking some dinner, since both Najire and Achako's families would come over. So what's the big news? Both Inko and Hisashi were waiting for the news, we'll wait until the Hados and your Rakas are here to tell everyone, Izuku said as they waited for a few minutes, until the doorbell was rung Izuku opened the door and greeted both the your Rakas and the Hados. As they were invited inside, both Achako and Najire were happy to see their parents. Meanwhile Iri was both nervous and afraid of meeting her other grandparents, as she hid behind her grandma Inko. The first to acknowledge her presence within the quartet was Shuri Hado. Why hello there. She knelt down to Iri's hide as she hid showing only one eye to the older blue-haired woman. Don't be afraid. I won't bite. Her comments brought the other's attention to the small child who was not doing the greatest, with the addition of several new people off the bat. Izuku noticed this to kneel down to Iri and rub her back in a calming motion. It's okay Iri. These are the Yurakas and Hados. Your mommy's parents. They won't hurt you. Hearing this made Iri come out slightly more while holding Izuku in a fearful manner. H hello. She hid her face in Izuku's chest for him to pat her head. Sorry, she's really shy around new people. The four understood with Maruki bringing the comment Izuku made up. Did you just say my little girl and her best friend are her mother's? Both fathers looked at Izuku ready to kill him before he put his hands up in a defensive motion. I it's not in that manner of they're her mother. She's my adopted daughter Iri, and she's attached to the two like they're her real moms. Both Maruki and Haiwa weren't exactly believing it until Inko chimed in. My son is right in the fact that your daughters are not biologically her mother. Even with that however, Iri does hold a strong connection to them as a real mother and daughter would. If you'd sit down so we can explain this, we can possibly avoid any unintentional injuries and Iri being more scared than she already is of you. The nine sat down with Iri on Izuku's lap as they explained the whole ordeal about Iri being someone they met on their internships and needed a parent due to some things that weren't the greatest to explain. They eventually got to the point of where child services would be involved due to the little girl no longer needing to stay in the hospital. So to make a long story short, Eerie was either going to be put into foster care, where she won't have her personal issues situated or be living with a teenager foster father and his two girlfriends that she imprinted on in a basic means. The four were shocked to say the least hearing all this. Eerie, why don't we go sit down on the couch and watch something? I have some apple juice and rice crackers if you'd like. What's a rice cracker? The two walked to the kitchen to grab a few crackers and some juice for Eerie before going back to sit on the couch. There's no way this kid was that sheltered. Most of the adults agreed with Mr. Hado's comment before watching Eerie examine the rice cracker. She glanced at it like she wasn't fully sure what it really was before smelling it for a moment and taking a bite. The small girl chewed the snack a few times before smiling with a blush. Do you like rice crackers, sweetie? They're yummy, Grandma. Thank you. Neither Achako's or Najire's parents could say anything at this. They relived the moment when a child first experienced something in front of their eyes to be in complete shock. So, uh. That wasn't a lie about her being extremely sheltered, was it? When she came here for the first time, she didn't know what cartoons or curry were Hisashi answered Haiwa for all four parents to be amazed at how oblivious this little girl was to what life had for her in its simplest measures. Everyone continued to talk about this while Liri and Grandma Inko were watching TV when suddenly there was a harsh pounding at the front door of the apartment Izuku stood up and signaled his mom not to answer the door. When the pounding stopped the door was broken down with three people invading, we've come for the brat. Chapter 56. As the Midoriya residence was being broken into, one of the invaders had proclaimed that they were there to abduct Iri. Mom get Iri and stay behind me, Izuku shouted he then calculated that if he'd use his swords, there's a possibility he would hurt his family, Izuku also took into account that if he used his quirk and the floor would likely give out and they'd all fall through to the next floor. 
The best, he'd be only able to use direct contact quirk usage in hand to hand. The first to charge in was a former pro that went directly for Yuzuku. He tried to touch the man, but his body morphed around his hand for it to completely go through. It seems I've been forgotten for a while now. Izuku was agitated before saying the guy's name. The putty hero. Amorphous. Didn't expect you to fall this far. So you remember who I am. Not that it's gonna matter in about 10 minutes. The former pro punched Izuku with an enlarged fist across the room and into a table to shatter it. Izuku Najire went charging for the former pro to only have a guy that looked like he was part bat use a supersonic sound wave on her. What the like my quirk hexy. It gives me the ability to create a sonar similar to a bat's, except in a more devastating way. A piece of wood came at the bat person for it to be blocked by some kid with his shoulder. Upon closer inspection, the shoulder bone seemed to increase in size to look like a protective shield. Clever trick, but that's not gonna work on my bone shifting. Izuku started to get back up, siphoning the broken furniture looking very pissed. You jerks think it's wise to barge in and attack my family I'm gonna make you regret the day you thought it was a smart idea. Now that Izuku had powered up thanks to the broken furniture he rushed in and went after the invader with a bone shifting quirk after landing solid punches on him and trapping him in a grapple Izuku siphoned enough to make the guy's bones brittle while locked into the grapple, Izuku snapped the bones with ease. The bad quirk user launched a sonic screech making Izuku fall to his knees Najire and Ichako began to launch attacks at the bad quirk user, which made him fall back lastly, the former pro Amorphous was shaping putty-like limbs to land a powerful attack when he was blasted by Najire's quirk, then hit by a flying couch. This didn't do as much damage due to his quirk shaping his body into putty before getting behind the three to charge for Eerie. He was about to grab her before his hand was wrapped in a chain. I've done enough intel on you Amorphous to know one flaw of your quirk. To touch something, your body needs to be solid. Girls, I think it's time to show him what happens when you bring family into something that they shouldn't. Najira and Achako walked over to the now human-shaped former pro, holding a dark smile on their faces. In the distance, you could almost see the image of an oni come out of the aura around it filled with hatred. The only thing that outside passerbys heard was the scream of what sounded like a woman before several loud smacks and hits. Of Kitsuki. Well he's not standing up anytime soon. The ash blonde states this looking through a pair of binoculars a few buildings away. Let me see. Kitsuki passed the binoculars to Kami who looked inside to see the mangled image of Amorphous. To be honest, I'd rather that happen to him than us. The two silently agreed to this statement before going back to watch the events unfold. But Izuku and company. After the brutal beatdown, Izuku had tied everyone up in his chain to keep them from going anywhere. Thinking this was it, Izuku began to call the cops to pick the villains up. Alright you three, I want answers. Who sent you after my daughter? The three laughed at the young green-haired boy for him to slowly show a vein on his head. He punched the wall right next to the bone quirk boy for it to go through. That wasn't a request. You honestly think you've won, kid. You don't know a thing about this. Najira knelt down to look amorphous in the eyes to ask. What don't we know? You thought it was just us three. Everyone immediately turned to Eerie and the parents only to see a man with a nose piercing and some tattoos hold a finger turned to a blade to Inko's neck and a blade hand to Eerie's. One move, and I cut this kid's head off and the hitch's throat gets lit. Razor. You've heard of me blue girl. Ryukyu's been trying to find you for a while now. Najira held a scowl as Izuku started to slowly activate his quirk. Ah. You move kid, and there's gonna be a big mess to clean up. He held his fingers closer to both his hostages' necks for fear to be shown in their eyes. What do you want? Izuku demanded answers as Razor laughed. We came here for this not nose brat. Bakugu wants her for some reason. You ask me though. Razor pulled one of his fingers to point right at Eerie's nose. This world is better off without the likes of her. Eerie was starting to panic with her breathing being heard by everyone. She was on the verge of a panic attack as she violently shook. Before this could go any farther, Razor's hands went back to normal for him to be unable to activate his quirk. What the AHHH Asashi immediately tackled the villain to the ground in anger to let Inko and Eerie go free. Mom. Eerie. Did he hurt you? I'm okay, but Eerie's Inko was cut short by Eerie hugging Izuku scared for her life. Daddy Hick that was scary. I know sweetie, but you did a good job not doing anything to provoke him. Najira and Ichako rushed behind Izuku to hug the small girl as she calmed down a bit more. Meanwhile, Hisashi was wrestling the villain on the ground enraged by what he did. You've got no right to bring my wife and granddaughter into this you bastard razor punched him in the face a couple of times to get on top of Hisashi to repeatedly do it. After the fourth or fifth time, Hisashi grabbed his arm to give a solid left to the villain's face. He then kneed Razor repeatedly in the stomach before headbutting his skull to finally disorient the villain enough to kick him off. Izuku then tied him up in his chain as well before turning to Hisashi to help him. 
Dad, you okay? Yeah. Too sorry you had to see that. Asashi held a few cuts, a black eye, what looked like a broken nose, and a bloodied lip on his face from the assault for Izuku to immediately start healing him. Once back to full health, Izuku helped his father up to his feet when six police officers along with Eraser Head, Dabi, Tenko and Kurajiri entered the home to see four people chained up. Sensei how do you know there was trouble? I didn't. Someone put in a 911 call to this address saying that some villains were attacking and that a few heroes needed backup. The cops sent us out since we were closer. So Razor losing his quirk before was your doing. Thank you for the help sir. Najire says this with Eerie beginning to calm down a little more. She walked up to Azawa to bow to him. Thank you for saving me and grandma sir. He knelt down a bit to pat the small child's head. Just did what I'm supposed to. Azawa got back up to look at Inko and Hisashi. Due to this attack however, it might be best to put you two in a witness protection program. Why though? Izuku held his head down realizing what his teacher was getting at. This. This may be because of Kachin. Why do you think that? Izuku swallowed a lump in his throat before answering his father's question. He found a way to speak to me earlier today. During this, he threatened you, Najira and Achako, he even threatened Yuri just to get back at me. Inko knew the Ash Blonde did some bad things, but never expected him to actually attack people that are just related to her son who wronged him in Katsuki's eyes. And you didn't tell either of you as why both Najira and Achako were fumed at Izuku. I didn't want to worry you both. Both gave a karate chop to his head for the green-haired boy to fall face first into the floor. Look Izuku, keeping this to yourself wasn't a good idea. Najira's right. If something like this is troubling you, then we might be able to help if you just say it to us. I probably should've. Izuku got back up for both girls to hug him. You're not in this alone. You've got us to help. If Bakugu wants to come after us, let him. We'll find a way to help you, but we need to know if you do need it. We worry for you. Izuku smiled a bit before hugging both girls and smiling. Thanks. Yue. Once arriving back at Yue with Izuku's parents they were escorted to Nezu's office, as Awa knocked on the door, come in, said Nezu in a chipper voice. They saw the principal sipping tea, hello Midoriyas, I've already been informed of what has happened. Starting today you'll both be under witness protection, both Inko and Hisashi were nervous not knowing where they'll be sent to, where will grandma and grandpa go. Eerie was worried she'd never see her grandparents again for the small rodent to reassure her. You needn't worry Eerie, the Midoriyas won't be going far away or anything like that. In fact, we plan to move them closer to you. Everyone was confused as Nezu explained. Since Bakugu has placed a death threat on not only the Midoriyas, but on Ms. Hado and Ms. Yuraka along with Hiri, the police believed it would be easier if they would live on school grounds. Unfortunately, they will need a guard when going off campus especially for the most trivial things. But this is for their safety. Their new living arrangement should be ready they'll be next to the dorms. After leaving Nezu's office they headed off to the dorms to see everyone from class 1 looking at the new structure that was built next to the dorms. The first to comment was Kaminari who glanced at the six in curiosity. So anyone wanna tell me why there's another dorm dead smack next to ours? To make a long story short, my parents were attacked and there's a good chance Kachin had something to do with this. Because of that, my parents will be living on campus as a form of witness protection. The family went inside to see it was a rather nice little home that could fit a few people if need be. When did Yue get the chance to make something like this? This place is amazing. The Sashi was rather amazed with Inko needing to sit down acknowledging what had happened. To her, the attack she could accept since her son was now pro and he'd make a few enemies. But the child she led in her house, helped watch over when Mitsuki needed to clean her house, even thought for a bit of time, would be an amazing hero did this. To her, this was too much to take in. Mom? Are you okay? Izuku sat beside Inko who was sick to her stomach. What happened to make Kitsuki like this? The green-haired boy didn't know what to say. I I just don't know. I've been trying to make heads or tails of that myself for a while now. But I know this much. Kitsuki made a threat on you, Dad, Najire, Achako, and Eerie with him following through for at least one of those. I don't like the thought of going after my childhood friend bully or not, but I'm not gonna let my family and loved ones be dragged into something like this. If it was just me, I could handle it. But I'm not letting you all get hurt because of someone's vendetta against me. Inko smiled before hugging Izuku. I'm glad you're my son, you know that. Izuku smiled before patting her back in a calming manner. I'm glad you're my mom as well. They let go with a knock on the door being heard. I'll get it. Najire jumped up with a smile to open and reveal the whole class of wanna walk into the small house. Sorry to barge in, but we found out from Mr. Azawa what happened to just wanna make sure you all are okay. Hiroshima stated this a little uneasy with some of the girls behind him with some sweets and tea. We also brought some sweets and some yummy tea compliments of Yamomo why thank you all. That's sweet of you. 
Inko smiled as everyone in the class hung around the living room, with the happy mother telling embarrassing baby stories about her son to make him want to crawl in a hole. With Kitsuki and Kami. The two returned to their hideout with a lack of satisfaction that the situation ended in their loss. So what's next? The cops are gonna put Deku's family in protective custody. Because of that, the nerd's gonna be focused on me. That alone will give us time to find more people to join us. So the situation was like, to give him tunnel vision. Lit. As they walked in, one of their henchmen came with important news. Boss, I got a hold of the leader of the Liberation Army. We're meeting him tomorrow night at this location. He gave Katsuki a piece of paper for him to smile. And this is where things get fun. Chapter 57. Few weeks have passed since the attack on the Midoriya residence, with everyone calming down a little more and accepting their new neighbors. During this time, Izuku and Mirio would regularly be asked by Night Eye to assist with following leads to find Katsuki or any strong villains that they'd want off the streets. It was Saturday for everyone in class with Izuku, Achako, and Ajire sleeping in a bit. Thanks to Eri wanting a sleepover, the three were alone the night before and enjoyed the time that they had while releasing a small bit of pent-up stress. The three woke up when they heard Izuku's phone vibrate. He reached for it on his nightstand in a half-asleep manner, unable to grab it before Ichako led his hand to the phone. He picked it up and answered it. MNN, hello. Midoriya. I apologize for calling you so early, but I have something that must be discussed with you and Mirio. It's fine sir. I'll be there as soon as possible. They both hung up for Izuku to wake up rather irritated, but accepting of this. What's going on? The gyre started to wake up for Izuku to turn and remember that they fell asleep without anything on, forcing him to go red when the covers slid off her. He immediately turned away while explaining to the girls. And night I wants me to head in to talk about something. Sorry I woke you. It's fine. We get it. Echako started to sit up showing her hair standing sideways a bit from bedhead. This is part of heroism, yawn so we can't blame you for that. Izuku turned to both girls and kissed their lips as an apology for waking them. I'll be back as soon as I can. He got out of bed to put something on before heading out to the agency. Few hours later. Izuku ran into the room noticing Mirio, Bubble Girl, Centipeter, and Night Eye sitting in the office. Sorry I'm late. Mirio just got here five minutes ago, so you're fine. The pro looked at Izuku's neck to notice a hint of red on it to pinch the bridge of his nose. Would you mind correcting your shirt so we do not see such unsightly images though? Izuku looked around his body before Bubble Girl pointed to her neck for the energy quirk user to realize what he meant. My apologies sir he immediately covered it before sitting down to listen to what Night Eye had to say. Now before we begin, I'd like to ask you both a question. Night Eye looked at Izuku and Mirio. How much of the villain Destro do you two know about? Mirio answered not exactly sure who he was, since UA didn't touch on him as much in history as others. Not a lot sir. All I know is that he was someone that had fraud against the framework for rules regarding quirks, but that's about it. I don't exactly blame you all for not knowing. He is quite an old villain that is not talked of as much nowadays. Night I took a breath before starting. To make it simple, Destro's ideals were to offer everyone the ability to use their powers and make that as a reason people shouldn't do crimes, since everyone would be entitled to stop them. Sounds a bit utopian of a way to think. Because everyone can, you won't. Kinda ridiculous. Quite. Unfortunately, Destro pushed to do this and even was able to amass an army due to this and nearly caused the collapse of our society when the framework was just barely being held. Fortunately he failed and spent the rest of his life in a jail cell before ultimately committing suicide. Both boys now started to realize why he was vaguely touched on. But before he died, he created a book that showcased his ideals. This would later be published and for the majority lost to the ages. So why is this important sir? Night I walked over to his desk before pulling out four copies of a book to answer Centipeter's question. The book was republished recently, and we have reason to believe it was the act of the liberation of Quirk's movement that had a part in this. Izuku looked at the name to read it out loud. Special Abilities Liberation Front. That sounds like a cult alone. Perhaps, but we do not have many leads on this case. All we know is this group is amassing followers as we speak, and it's only a matter of time till they overcrowd the heroes. Bubble Girl understood what they were doing to question. So we're possibly facing an army that outnumbers heroes right now and trying to find their leader. Precisely. We also do not have much intel, but Bakugou could be involving himself with the liberation of Quirk's movement to make things even more dangerous. Izuku went pale thinking that Bakugou could actually do what he planned if they couldn't stop this. Right now I'd like you all to look at whatever information you could on a possible lead and bring it back when you find it, we'll determine whether we should look into it or not. Yes sir. Everyone left with Izuku and Mirio walking back to the school. Not wasting time, Izuku pulled out the book to begin reading to find any possible hints in the book itself. 
Akigu, you better not be affiliated with them. After this meeting with Night Ayazuku had gone back home with a copy of the book and began to read it as he hoped to find any clues that detailed their plans like a hidden message of some sort. Unfortunately, all he read was the ideals of a European ideologist who wouldn't be able to stop and think of the weaker bystanders or the fact some quirks are just too powerful to use. The ideal that nobody would be able to commit crimes if they had to face someone in the crowd able to face them with a quirk would work if everyone was on the same page. However, not everyone is to make this unable to be done. Even if tried, what guarantee is there that someone else who can't protect themselves won't be caught in the crossfire? In the end, Izuku simply looked up Destro, the original publisher and the revised publisher of the book, to find no exact link between the Liberation Unit and this book, to think it was a dead end. Later in the evening. After reading the whole book from front to back about three times in his efforts, Izuku rage quit and decided to watch some TV with Eerie as a way to help clear his mind and think of a way to get a lead that would make sense. Hey Izuku. Izuku looked at the door to see both Najaira and Ichako come in from a bit of training with Ryukyu. How was training? Nice. Listen to this, Ryukyu offered me a chance to become her sidekick right out of UA when I graduate this year. I'm so excited for that Najaira was practically floating in the air from her excitement to make Izuku happy for his girlfriend. That's fantastic news. So how's the hunt for the liberation group? Ichako asked for the green-haired boy to hold his head down. Not so good. I've scanned this book from front to back with absolutely no leads whatsoever. I tried looking into both publishers to find absolutely no link or even a track record to go on for this. I even went so far as to look into the workers of the factory to find just one dead end after the other. Izuku was somewhat angered before glancing at the TV to notice it was a talk show about a new face in the support gear industry. Now let's talk about your company's new work in the support gear market. What exactly made you join this field? Well we as humble workers have always made our product top of the line for special cases with quirks. So as a way to help the society even more, we decided to place our ballets in to see if we could do more for the heroes who protect the populace we make products for. Izuku watched the show with curiosity, unsure who he was. Oh, I guess Detonrit Industries is starting with hero support gear now. Izuku looked back to see Aoi Rozu watching the TV a bit. You know this guy. Who doesn't? That's Riki Yatsubashi, president of the Detonrit Corporation. They're one of the biggest groups out there that doesn't have affiliation with my family. They do amazing work with styles for quirk users that have special alterations. I'm pretty sure most of our classmates with mutation quirks have used their products before. Izuku paid closer attention to the man before asking a bit more. Do you think he'll succeed with hero support gear? Most if not all his decisions he's made as company president have ended in success to the point many consider him a corporate genius. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Izuku started to look up this Yatsubashi guy to find he does actually have his hands in almost every aspect of the market. From household items to fashion for people with special quirks. Yeoi Rozu wasn't lying when she said he's a genius. Izuku thought this as he looked at all the success to the point he was somewhat rooting for the guy. But just as he was near the middle of all the accomplishments, the young pro discovered something unique. Detonrit Industries is a leading benefactor of the publishing company that republished Special Abilities Liberation Front. Izuku began looking at other people Yatsubashi supported with his company to find several other groups that could easily hide any tracks left if they were leading the Liberation Army. This isn't good. Once he discovered that the Tenrit Industries was backing the publishing company for the Meta Liberation books he called Night Eye to tell him of this to see if it could lead to a major break with the case. Of Katsuki. As Katsuki had an appointment to meet with Redestro Hikami and a couple of their strongest lackeys had gone to Dika City in order to meet with the head of the MLA. As they got into the city they tried to plan how to infiltrate the city, seeing as they're still wanted fugitives, but then a woman approached them, are you here to join MLA? The group was a tad bit confused as they believed that the woman would have tried and reported them to the authorities. Aren't you gonna report us? Kami asked when she heard the woman chuckle, don't worry the city's citizens and heroes here are all loyal MLA supporters. Our heroes are moles for us to get every kind of information you can think of. Katsuki walked in front to speak up. My name is Katsuki Bakugu, and I've got a meeting with your boss. The woman looked at him with a smile before laughing hysterically. You truly are a rude one, I'll give you that. Ahahaha very well, you'll come with me, but the rest stay here. Everyone looked around to see the citizen circling them. They're coming too. If not, I order a giant ass underling that's a distance away to come here. And why should we worry about him? Katsuki chuckled a bit to himself before explaining. He's our ace against the shitty loser that calls himself Catalyst. A living unlimited energy dynamo. He can last on 3 hours of sleep within 72 hours alone. And the best part is he obeys me. If I tell him to destroy this bucking place and all of you with it, he'll do it without a second thought. 
All I gotta do is snap my fingers and he'll come here. The woman believed he was gambling this, but had no reason to think he was bluffing or not. You don't play nice with others, do you? Let's just say, I'd rather be the top dog instead of some shitty low-class thug like these losers. Very well, they can come along. The woman had a hole made for everyone to walk through to the center of Dika. Here, they were led into an office building and brought up to the top floor. There, a man with significant receding hairlines was sitting behind a desk sitting calmly before noticing everyone walking in. Chapter 58. Izuku and the heroes have continued the massive manhunt for Katsuki Bakugou and Kami Atsushimi. The news has made daily reports saying that the two are still at large meanwhile the public have become very cautious of anybody they encounter in fear that they may be part of the former heroes group. Meanwhile, Achako and Najire continued their internships under Ryukyu with their friend Tsu. Today, they were chasing a possible lead on the former Shinketsu student for it to once again lead to a dead end. Walking back to the agency, the four began to assess and go about their next move. So where do we go from here? Najair questioned as the dragon hero went over what they had obtained in regards to leads. There's an abandoned building in the outskirts of town we should check next. If we're lucky, we should find a lead there. If people aren't seeing them around populated areas, then that should mean they're either in the countryside or on the outskirts in abandoned buildings. Either way, they've been noticed in this area quite a few times. I don't think that's a coincidence. Achako and Najair were rather agitated, remembering just what type of woman Kami was. Not only would it be satisfying to put her behind bars, but also be able to give a bit of a roughing up while doing it for what she did to their boyfriend. Ahh the four heard a scream come somewhere close by to run towards its location. While coming to the place, they noticed a man with horrid burns on the ground shaking. Sir what happened? The man continued to tremble in fear as he tried to utter the word, Akuma the man claimed to see a demon, but his testimony would be useless, since he seemed to not be in his right mind at the moment. Whoa, so like that's what it can do. Like totes awesome. The voice that said this made both Najire and Achako go pale, knowing that only one person talked in such a fashion. They turned behind them to see Kami sitting on a garbage can in a black dress and a white fur coat. How you been fam? I heard you two became mommies, how's that treating you? The gyre charged her power up to its max output to put her hand out ready to kill Kami. Max output 100%. Najira fled the blast went directly at the fawn-colored girl for it to destroy the trash can along with anything around it. Like so lame girlfriend. You didn't even want to chat. They turned around to see Kami beside them before she disappeared. She's playing with us. Be on high alert. Ryukyu stated this with Tsu taking the man to safety. All the while, he was screaming thinking he saw demons everywhere. So that girl was the one from when we chatted at the mall. She looks like Uber Fetch in her hero suit. So how's Yuri doing? One of the clones said this to set Achako off. She punched the illusion in agitation. Leave our daughter's name out of your filthy mouth you skank ouch. Made your bummer girlfriend. The trio kept attacking the clones with neither being the real one. Eventually, Ryukyu began to understand this was to mess with them and weaken them enough. Girls calm down she's only doing this to get the jump on you, well weakened the two girls went back to back and took a deep breath before gaining a bit of composure. Think for a minute you two. All these are most likely fakes with the real either hiding or running away. Oh I'm not running Ryukyu. This is like totes fun and I'm not missing it. The dragon hero kept looking around until one of the copies she noticed had a hand raised right at Najair. Najair get down Ryukyu tackled Najair to the ground to avoid a blast of fire coming directly at her. In the process, the flame was able to graze Ryukyu's left shoulder before hitting the wall. What the? Echako glanced at the flame to notice it wasn't a normal fire. It was pitch black and definitely wasn't normal in the slightest. What did she do? I thought her quirk could only do illusions. She felt the fire to feel heat from it and realized this wasn't an illusion. You okay Najire? Yeah. Thanks Ryukyu. Did it get you? The dragon hero looked at her shoulder to see a small burn. It only grazed me. Both women got up before the dragon hero began to hear sobbing. She looked behind her to be absolutely mortified by what she had discovered. Mommy. Daddy. Sniffle, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't born right. Please forgive me the classmate Ryukyu knew long ago that took her own life was haunting her again. The girl she failed to save in middle school and watched her die on the ground begging for her parents' apology. Tears started to come down her face remembering this failure and how it should have never happened. Ryukyu both Achako and Najair came to their mentor to try and shake her out of it. Fortunately, the image didn't last long for her eyes as it disappeared after being shaken a bit. What happened? You got hit with that fire and started crying on the floor. Ryukyu got up to notice they were alone in the alley. What happened to Atsushimi? Gone. She was able to make a break for it when we were worrying about you. You kept saying something like, I'm sorry and forgive me Kakai. We didn't know what it meant, so we got a little worried. 
Ryukyu looked around before compassing herself the best she could. Let's go. I'm certain Froppy is getting worried. The two girls nodded as they left. As they did, Kami was discovered up above on a building smiling down at them. Kakai, huh? I wonder who that is. She started looking on the web about anyone named Kakai to find a small article about a girl by the name Asa Kakai that died by taking her life. If she was alive today, she'd be about the same age as the dragon hero. I think my little testing of Nightmare Flame's done. She started to call someone on her phone before saying where to pick her up. But Izuku. So, you have a lead. Uh, sorta sir. Izuku sat in Night Eye's office with Iri on his lap enjoying a bit of juice, compliments of Bubble Girl. Sorry that Iri's here. I didn't have a sitter, and the girls are out on a job with Ryukyu. Not a problem. We weren't doing any specific work that a child would cause a problem. So about the information you have. Well, it's more as a lead. Wait. A hunch is probably a better thing to put it as. Night Eye, Bubble Girl, Centipede, and Mirio looked at Izuku confused as he explained what he meant. When I was looking into the information about the publisher and the villain Destro, there was next to nothing linking him, his family, or even in-laws to each other. But while doing this, I noticed a talk show about CEO Riki Yatsubashi. I didn't think much about it until I looked into the man in curiosity. There, I found that the company to Tenred Industries had connections to the publishing company that did the remake of the book. So it's a long shot, but maybe Detenre Industries or Mr. Yatsubashi himself has connections. The slender pro thought of this as Izuku kept explaining. He has connections into almost everything now because his company's doing support gear now. Seems like a huge long shot if you ask me. I wish I had better of a lead to follow for this bubble girl, but I did look into Yatsubashi's family history, as well as his connections to have next to nothing known of his birth parents and have connections to people he can easily hide behind. I'm not saying it isn't a long shot sir, but I have a gut feeling he could at least lead us to what we're looking for. Night I thought about this before answering. Bubble girl, can you and Centipede watch Yuri for a few hours? Uh, sure. What's going on? Night I got up from his seat and adjusted his glasses. We will be looking into this lead. I understand that it's a long shot, but it's the best we have right now. Chapter 59. As the group of Mirio, Izuku and Night Eye set off, the slender-looking pro made a call to Detenrit Industry to hopefully get a meeting with the CEO today. Luckily, he was able to for the group to have an appointment with him in an hour. When they got there, the receptionist escorted them to the top floor of the large building. There, a man with rather far back of a receding hairline and a pointed nose met them. Why hello. You must be Sir Night Eye. My name is Riki Yatsubashi, head of Detenrit Industries. Thank you for meeting us on such short notice sir. I'm certain you have more pressing business that would require your attention over this meeting. So for that I must thank you for speaking with us. Oh it's not any trouble. If I could get to meet the former sidekick of the symbol of peace as well as the two that will most likely attain his mantle, it would possibly turn out to my benefit. The aura around Yatsubashi was relatively calm and didn't stick out at all. All three figured that maybe this was a dead end with no real lead to what they wished. Where are my manners? Please come in and take a seat. Thank you. As they walked in and sat, Night Eye kept his mind out for anything that may require him to use his quirk to find out. Due to him being able to use his quirk once a day, the pro had to be extremely careful how he chooses to use his future side ability. As they spoke to Riki Yatsubashi making small talk while slowly trying to lead the conversation toward having him expose himself but during this whole meeting, it felt like one of the most intense chess matches. As the heroes saw this conversation had ended in a stalemate they decided to leave, not before shaking his hand Night Eye controlled himself and didn't use his quirk. Damn it. This was a dead end. Izuku tried to think of some way to make use before noticing the book the pro asked him to look into on Yatsubashi's desk. I see you have a copy of the renewed edition of Special Abilities Liberation Front. It really is an interesting read that I feel as if it could make heroes' jobs much easier. This comment came as a surprise to everyone as Izuku flat out lied about the book. You believe so as well, it's such a great thing to know that this generation of heroes has such a great acceptance of this aspect. The words it speaks are truly empowering to everyone that reads it and is something that can possibly stop crime rate. This comment made a red flag be drawn by Night Eye enough to consider activating his quirk. I know. I've seen people get hurt and those who try to protect them get reprimanded as a child because they just simply use their quirk. The people who try to do right regularly get punished even though they aren't the bad guys in the situation. It's so horrible to have this happen. Sometimes I believe this world is just destined to end if someone doesn't do something to stop it. That's it Midoriya. Keep his attention on you and only you. Night I kept looking through the CEO's future before coming across an image he was afraid would be the case. This not only solidified Izuku's theory, but also gave a foreboding future to come. 
Before he could see the final outcome though, Nidai had to stop as Yatsubashi turned his attention to him. My apologies Mr. Nidai. That was rather rude of me to banter like that. Not at all. It is understandable that one would be inspired to discuss what they believe is right with another that shares the same views. The three bowed before walking out of the office. Sir. Hizuku. What was that about? Mirio tried to grasp the situation before his mentor held his finger up to ask him to wait. They exited the building silently before getting some distance away. Midoriya was right. Yatsubashi is part of the new Liberation Army and leads it. Wait, you used your quirk. Both boys asked as Nidai confirmed. After his reaction to Midoriya's statement, I decided to try and look into his future. To my surprise, Riki Yatsubashi is in fact the leader of the Liberation Army. Both young pros looked shocked. Mirio was about to speak before Nidai continued. I had also discovered the worst case scenario had already happened. The Liberation Army has also made contact with Katsuki Bakugou. Both are now working together and are preparing to deal a devastating blow to the hero society. Izuku began to grow fear before asking Nidai. D did you see anything else? That was all I could see. Now let us return to the agency and continue from there. The duo nodded and proceeded back to Nidai's agency. However, the pro didn't say all he had seen to the two. In the future, there was without a doubt going to be a battle where the two as well as every hero imaginable would be pushed to their limits. This would only add danger with a monstrous beast facing Izuku, Achako, Najira and a few other pros, with Bakugou and Kami atop it starring down. The last bit that night I could see was Izuku charging headfirst in to attack the Ash Blonde before stopping right when they'd connect. He didn't want to say this as the future was undoubtedly unclear and did not wish to concern them both with unknown answers, but the pro knew the future was going to be an all-out war. While returning to the Night Eye Hero Agency, the group obtained a call from Bubble Girl. Sir I know you're out on a lead, but we have a situation. What is it? Night Eye asked with both Izuku and Mirio only hearing parts of the conversation. Ryukyu's here with her work-study student saying they found Kami at Sashimi. What Izuku overheard wasn't much, but he did hear his teacher's name and Kami's in the same sentence. His mind went a mile a minute in fear something bad happened. We're on our way back. Tell the dragon hero it will be a few minutes. Night I hung up with Izuku looking at him in fear. It turns out Ryukyu had a run-in with your old acquaintance Atsushimi. Is everyone okay? The fear in the green-haired boy's voice was prominent as he received his answer. I wasn't told of anyone being injured. All I know is they had a run-in, and Ryukyu is at my agency with her work-study students. Relax Izuku. Your girlfriends and classmate are tough. Nobody's gonna beat them that easily. Mirio tried to comfort his junior with Izuku nodding. Deep down however, he felt a lump in his throat that something bad was going to happen. At the agency. The three arrived at Night Eye's office to open the door and reveal all seven in the room. Nice to see you again Catalyst. Ryukyu smiled at Izuku a bit before returning to her serious look. Now onto the topic at hand. Night Eye got in his chair before looking at Ryukyu. You stated that you were able to come into contact with Kami Atsushimi, correct? Yes. Before the encounter, we had discovered a man who was screaming about demons around him. Not long after discovering him, Atsushimi had made her presence known to us. In a chase, myself, Najire, and Uravity had pursued her before she attacked us with an abnormal fire. Fire. Izuku thought this before Ryukyu continued. What made this fire unique was that instead of red or a color to indicate its heat, this one was pitch black and had a tricky side effect when it would connect to someone. When it grazed my shoulder, I had witnessed a memory I'd rather not relive. The Dragon Pro remembered the image vividly. How long did it last? From what I was told, about five minutes. The man who had encountered her before us had an extra 30 minutes before it began to subdue inside him. He explained to us after that he had owed someone money with obtaining a threat a few days back that someone would make him pay in some way. He didn't put much into it before today. If he owed someone connected to the liberation money, that would explain why. Night I looked over to see all four women completely lost. What is the liberation? To put it bluntly, a group of people wanting to create a world where quirk laws don't exist. Sounds kinda crazy if you ask me. Laws are made to deter people from doing bad things, so why do they want to take them down ribbit? Why does any power-hungry megalomaniac that wants to rid the current society want to abolish laws? Tsu agreed with Izuku's comment before Najira asked. But what does Atsushimi have to do with this liberation thingy? To make it simple, we've discovered today that Bakugu's group had come into contact with the liberation of Quirk's movement and is now working together. Ryukyu's eyes widened at this realizing a psychopathic teenager bent on destruction and has the quirk to do it, now has the backing to make him ten times as dangerous easily. Wait, but what does Atsushimi having a second quirk have to do with this? Achako asked with Eri sitting on her lap following some of the conversation, before turning to other things to grasp her attention. 
Upon our investigation into the breakout, we have reason to believe Katsuki Bakugu has the same entity that possessed Asashi Midoriya several years ago. The fact that Sashimi now has a second quirk solidifies that theory. Najai Renichako's blood went cold, realizing Bakugu has the power that possessed Izuku's father and nearly killed him before. This time however, neither would most likely have an issue fighting and even killing Izuku. This cannot end well. Trust me when I say that you're right Ryukyu. Starting now, we need to do a thorough investigation into the company of Detenrit and its CEO Riki Yatsubashi. Am I the only one in the dark here? Najaira asked with Mirio and Izuku explaining. We found out earlier today that he's their leader thanks to Izuku here helping raise a red flag and Sir's quirk. That's why we know Bakugu's on their side. We don't know much, but this is a start for us to start looking into the company and Yatsubashi himself. Najaira understood as the six were told they could head back to the dorms to rest. Everyone knew they'd need it starting this investigation. But Bakugu. So you ran into Deku's Lutz, huh? Bakugu day in a chair going over some of the quirks he had with a doctor that was bald and was rather up there in years. From what he said, the old doctor was a personal assistant to Afo since the man before Izuku's father was possessed. Yeah, but their totes lay men didn't put up much of a fight. When Ryukyu went down, they had to pull back. This made the ash blonde smirk before hearing one final bit from Kami. I also found a juicy little bit of dirt on Ryukyu. Turns out, the twerk she helped wasn't the only quirkless person that jumped off a building. I wonder how she'd feel if we mess with her about that finding. The smile on Bakugu's face grew more realizing he found a way around one of the major hurdles. The aware Bakugu, we still have Shigaraki to deal with. Though most of his power is not able to be controlled, he is still a threat if we don't watch him and keep Decay from being fully active. Yeah yeah. Bakugu heard this and began questioning how exactly he should do this. Back at the dorms. When Izuku Achako, Najire, Eri, Mirio and Sayu had gotten back to the dorms they greeted by their class but seemed to ignore them due to all the info that they now know. Izuku began to think of the possibility that Katsuki and Kami might be too far gone to be saved. He didn't like to think this, but he may also have to consider with everything that's happening putting them down for good when the time comes. Even though they made his life a living hell and that the world may actually be better off without them in it, it made the green-haired boy sick to his stomach considering killing anyone, let alone someone he's known for years. Please. I don't care what happens after, but please don't let it come to this caution. I hate you, but I don't want to kill you if I can avoid it. Chapter 60. Weeks continued to pass for everyone with Christmas being close by. As such, many of the students began getting ready for the holiday. However, Eri had not known much about the holiday to be rather confused about the events going on around her. Daddy, what's Christmas? Izuku stopped in his tracks, realizing neither him or the girls explained Christmas to Eri. Well Eri, Christmas is a holiday where those that are part of certain groups pay honor to who they call their savior being born. But nowadays, it's a holiday where a man called Santa comes to visit your house on the 24th to leave presents under everyone's Christmas trees if you're good. What's a Christmas tree? Izuku followed her to the common space where Jiru and Kaminari were putting lights up on the tree. Though a mishap happened where Kaminari found himself tied up with a plug in his mouth and powering the lights to make him look like a tree a bit. For the most part, a Christmas tree is this tree with lights and pretty ornaments put on. The whole thing is also topped with an angel or a star. Pretty ornaments and a star. Her eyes lit up when she heard this before the door opened to the big three coming in. Hey Izuku. Hey Eri. Ready for Christmas. Eri ran over to Najaira and began speaking of what she heard. Mommy did you know there's a day where a man breaks into our house and puts presents under a tree with bright lights and pretty ornaments you mean Christmas? Yeah. Wanna help us decorate? The small girl nodded and followed Tamaki and Mirio to the other side of the room. Meanwhile, Najaira came over to Izuku to talk. Achako's having some trouble wrapping presents upstairs for you know who. You mind helping her and I'll take over Eri watch. The two looked over to see the small girl holding a wreath around her for them to laugh. Sure. Shouldn't be a problem to give a hand. Najaira gave Izuku a quick peck before he left to handle assisting his other girlfriend. As he got to her room, he heard what sounded like her growling a bit before a shout. Why don't you just stay still damn it Izuku laughed to himself while opening the door to see Achako having several pieces of tape on her as well, with several pieces of destroyed pieces of wrapping paper around her. Need a little help. Izuku walked in to pull the tape on Achako off before putting the pieces and the crumbled up wrapping paper in a bag. Sorry, I kinda stink at this stuff. Not a problem. We all have our strong and weak points. Izuku pulled a piece of wrapping paper out and placed a box holding a gift for Eri in the center. He began folding it over on itself to get dimensions and cut off the excess. To keep it in place, the green-haired boy used a small bit of tape in the center before folding the paper on the sides in and then the top and bottom with it held together by another piece of tape. 
He continued the cycle with the other half to leave Achako stunned. It took me an hour to try and wrap one. Way to go without shining me. I took a job during December at a mall doing this. The more you do it, the easier it gets. He sized the next gift's wrapping paper before walking Achako through the steps on the side. When the gift was finished, the two smiled knowing it was done rather nicely and looked like Izuku's. So how's Iri downstairs? She's learning about Christmas. At least, the best she can with thinking Santa some creep that sneaks into your house to leave you gifts. Both snorted at this before continuing with the next few gifts to get it done relatively fast. So how's Ryukyu? You said she was kinda shaken up after the attack by Kami. Echako frowned a bit before answering. She said it was something where she saw a vision of her past she can never forget, but wish she could. Whatever it was, it had to be something scary. A lump formed in Yuzuku's throat as he most likely knew what that memory was. That thing, I think I know what she saw. What is it? When I was in the hospital all the way back to when we first met, Ryukyu told me about a girl she knew that jumped the same way I did. Like me, she was quirkless and treated like she was inferior. But unlike me, she didn't survive. At least for long. Achako felt a chill down her spine, realizing the pro she trained with saw what she did. D did she say what she saw after? The girl she knew was dying on the sidewalk crying for her parents for giving her. Oh my god. Sometimes, the worst lessons are the ones we learn the hard way. Now a quirk that is able to turn someone's own personal pain against them is in the hands of someone's hands that knows how to cause pain on others. The door opened to show Najire walking inside the room. So Ryukyu is like us. Izuku nodded understanding she overheard everything. That's not the issue. The real issue is the being possessing Ka I mean Bakugu. I don't know how many quirks that thing has, but it's definitely one of the most dangerous beings in existence. If we can stop it before it possesses another person, maybe we can end this nightmare. The issue is, we're literally facing a specter that is ready to kill at the drop of a hat. And it doesn't help that he's in the body of a pompous jerk with a short fuse. Echako added before Izuku realized something. Najire, where's Yuri? She's hanging out downstairs with Mirio and Tamaki. They're putting things up and Iri's being their little helper. She's so cute. She's holding so many things to the point it's over her head. Oh my god, that's adorable both teenagers answered at once for Izuku to finish the last gift that needed wrapping. Well Iri should be happy tomorrow. Hopefully she'll get past the whole scent as a stranger comment and try to call the jolly man by his real name. I hear you there Najire. I'm gonna go make something to snack on. Do you girls want anything? Sure. But we've got a few final gifts to wrap, so we'll be downstairs in a few. Okay. As Izuku left, both girls looked at each other before pulling a box out from underneath Achako's bed. I hope Izuku likes this. Don't be silly Achako. Why wouldn't he like this? They opened the box to smile at its inside contents. Definitely worth the pay. But Izuku. As he went to make himself a snack to eat when he walked downstairs, Izuku saw the sparkle in Iri's eyes as she assisted the rest of his class in preparing for Christmas. He then began to think about inviting his and his girlfriend's families to the one a Christmas party, but before doing that he made himself a quick sandwich to eat after finishing his food, he quietly slipped out to see his parents without Eerie noticing, so the surprise wouldn't be ruined. Upon reaching his parents' home he was about to knock when he heard an argument going on it was between his dad and both his girlfriend's parents. Just as he was about to knock Inko opened the door as she was going to get Izuku to settle the silly dispute, Izuku perfect timing, we need your help now as he walked in, he heard the conversation I should play Santa Hisashi, you're as thin as a twig, Achako's father could be heard trash talking, maybe I should play Santa, both Maruki and Hisashi laughed at Haiwa's comment, okay what's going on? After giving Izuku the short summary of why they began to argue Izuku quickly decided who would be Santa. Okay. We'll draw straws. Mom will hold them while you all pick them. The shortest is Santa and the other two will decide next year if you all can't decide. It's fair, unbiased, and everyone has a few chance. Nobody argued as Izuku pulled three straws out to give them to Inko. The three men held one of the straws before pulling them out. The shortest straw was given to Maruki. Good. Now if you six want, you can come over to our Christmas party. Just as Izuku was about to head to his dorm, Inko remembered something. Izuku, is it possible to invite Mitsuki and Maseru? Izuku thought of this and the fact he hasn't seen either in a few months, and wanted to at least know they were alright after everything that's happened. Sure. I'll find a teacher and tell them that the Bakugus are coming. Izuku walked back into the dorms before passing Azawa wearing a Santa hat. Mr. Azawa. Glad I ran into you. What is it Midoriya? Is there by any chance that we could invite the Bakugus to our Christmas party? The older man pulled out a flask and poured it in some eggnog he swiped from inside the dorms. Do I have to worry about something blowing up or some kind of destruction to school property? No at least I'm certain it'll be to the bare minimum if people don't anger Mitsuki. 
as always sip the spiked eggnog before answering. Any damage or problems are yours to deal with. Yes sir. He walked away to come in and see Eerie sitting down and eating a small sandwich alongside Sue, who had a small girl and an older boy next to her. He walked up to pat Eerie's head before sitting beside the four. So Tsu, who are these two? My little brother Samiter and sister Satsuki. Sup man. Hello. They waved for Izuku to smile at them. Hello. Merry Christmas you two. Thank you. Achako and Najira soon came down to see Eerie having a conversation with Satsuki. Seems you made a friend Eerie. She turned to nod at her mother's and smile. Satsuki said she's my age. She is. That's nice. The door soon opened to Achako's father wearing a Santa outfit. Ho 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 Merry Christmas the kid saw the man wearing the red suit for both Satsuki and Samiter to smile and walk up. Santa Maruki knelt down and smiled at the young frog kids before noticing Eerie staring blankly at him. Why hello little one. What's your name? Seeing the unknown person in front of her, Eerie was somewhat starting to move away. Now don't be afraid sweetheart. I'm not going to hurt you. Izuku watched Maruki reach for the small child with him and the girl is noticing what's happening. Da I mean Santa. I don't think you should reach for her right now. Achako tried to reason with his father who didn't comprehend what was happening. Oh don't be worried. Sometimes children only need a little ahhh Eri began panicking and swinging her arms at Maruki before unintentionally punching and giving him a black eye. Ahahaha <laughs> everyone heard laughter to see both Hisashi and Haiwa in the doorway with their wives, seeing the act to hold back the urge. It's okay Eri. Santa didn't try to scare you. All he wanted to do was just help know what to get you for Christmas. Izuku pulled Eri into his arms to try and help keep the small child from having a panic attack. Snort you okay Santa. She didn't get you too bad, did she? Harumi came up to her husband with a bit of snickering in her voice as Maruki tried to keep his facade so the kids wouldn't realize what happened. Ho. 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 I'm alright. I seem to have startled the young girl. He walked over and sat on a chair while Ichako and Najire explained what happened. You see Eri, that man there is Santa Claus. On Christmas Eve night, he travels all around the world and gives presents to good little girls and boys. He came here to ask you and Sue's siblings what you'd like for Christmas. If he scared you, he didn't mean it. Echako pulled Iri out of Izuku's arms and brought her near Maruki. Now all you need to do is sit on his lap and tell Santa what you'd like for Christmas. Can you do that? Iri looked at Santa and back at Echako before nodding. She sat down on Maruki's lap as he smiled. Hello Iri. I'm sorry for scaring you before. I, it's okay. Why don't we start this again? How about we start with you telling me what you'd like? Iri thought about it before getting an idea in her head for a gift. She whispered in Maruki's ear for him to smile. I'll see what I can do. Iri got down for Satsuki and Samiter to get on Maruki's lap after. When they were done, the taller man stood up and smiled at everyone. My apologies for coming and leaving, but tonight is a very busy night for me, and I must return to the North Pole. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. Maruki left through the door and ran back to Hisashi's and Inko's home to change. When he came back, Iri smiled at Maruki and ran up to her grandfather. Grandpa. Santa was here. He was. Guess I missed him. The trio smiled seeing their daughter a little less fearful of the Saint Nick, but then saw another look of fear in her eyes for some reason. She started backing away with two people walking into the common space. Sorry we're a little late. The two were Mitsuki and Maseru. Nobody realized it, but Iri was remembering what her first impression of Bakugu was to have very bad flashbacks of the culture festival with Mitsuki. Mitsuki. Maseru. Glad you made it. Izuku came up and held the little snowball in his hands. Izuku. Always a pleasure. There was a different aura around the ash blonde woman with many of the class not knowing why. It stopped when Toga realized something about the woman. Ma'am. Are you? Pregnant. Everyone realized the bump in Mitsuki's stomach at this point for her to smile. I am. And who might you be miss? I'm pretty sure you weren't around during the summer. Oh. I'm a transfer into the hero course. My name is Shiso Hanto. I transferred here a few months back. Amazing. What school did you transfer from? Toga froze remembering that she had to keep all information about her lineage with the league under wraps. J just a no-name school. I showed promise and well I was able to transfer here. Fair enough. Inko went up to her old girlfriend and smiled. I didn't know you were expecting. Yeah. Happened a month or so after my brat got arrested. Both adults held a satin face while explaining. A lot happened. We had to sell our house and move into an apartment complex, along with selling most of our stuff just to break even. It's been kinda hard on both of us, but we've managed the best we can. Every student in class A realized that their former classmate's actions really did affect his parents like Izuku said to feel remorse at this. So why are you two having another child then if you don't mind me asking? Yayoi Rozu asked for Mitsuki to explain. 
we screwed up with Katsuki. Everyone thought he was the greatest and would never be anything less than an amazing hero. Maybe if we were able to reprimand him more, none of this would have happened, and Izuku would still be relatively normal. Sigh but if anything, we can at least try again and maybe get this one to grow up right to make amends for what we failed to do with its brother. Mitsuki held her belly for Izuku to hug the older woman. I'm sorry about all this. None of you deserve to be brought into his mess. Mitsuki started patting Izuku's chest while hugging back. You don't have to apologize. Neither one of us knew this was going to be like this. Sometimes though I honestly hoped you would be a positive influence on Katsuki. Sadly I was wrong and it caused you problems. If anyone should be sorry, it's me for letting you go through what you did with him. Everyone witnessed this scene to feel a bit more sympathy. All the parents wanted of their son was for him to follow the right track. But because he didn't want to understand the consequences of his actions, Bakugu hurt everyone around him. When they parted, Iri grabbed her father's pant leg while looking at the blonde woman. Why hello there. What's your name? Mitsuki smiled at Iri as she hid behind Izuku. It's okay Iri. Mitsuki and Maseru aren't like the mean blonde you saw back at the culture festival. Sarda. Mitsuki might sound very scary, but she's really nice when you get to know her. She pulled her face out to look up at Mitsuki with one of her eyes. H hello. I'm Iri. Aren't you adorable? Where's your mommy and daddy? Iri stopped before pointing at Izuku, Achako, and Najire. Wait. Izuku did you? It's a long story. For the easiest way to explain it, Iri is legally my daughter with Achako and Najire acting as her mother's. Since she kinda imprinted on us, she called us her family before we had the papers signed. We didn't do what you think. Mitsuki shrugged before patting Iri's head. You have a nice daddy. Be nice to him. Iri nodded while seeing the red in Mitsuki's eyes. I like your eyes. They're pretty. Thank you. I like yours too. Chapter 61. As the holidays met their end, things began to return to normal in the group of Class A with the new year among them. With this, the class would begin their second year in the spring, with their third year friends taking the next step in their life. This was somewhat sad for Najire, since she wouldn't be able to see Izuku, Achako and Iri as often, since she would become a sidekick for Ryukyu when March would come. They all were sad, but Izuku mentioned this was a big deal for her if she chose to stand aside and let this pass her by due to not wanting to lower her time with them. It would be sad for a while, but they'd still see each other, and they'd try and keep what they had. So as a form of making up for this, Najira decided to spend as much time in the months to come with the three and try to fill the gap they'd have the best she could. One night in particular, Izuku was asleep with the three most important people in his life beside and atop him in Iri's case. While this occurred, Izuku dreamed of the possible future he'd have with his girlfriends and daughter. Deep in his mind, Izuku was having a dream of a formal wedding in a chapel with Najira and Achako beside him in wedding dresses. To the side of the green-haired boy were his parents crying knowing their son is getting married, along with Kirishima, Iida, Mirio, Tamaki and Todoroki acting as part of the wedding. To his girlfriend's sides were their parents also crying with their female classmates with Iri in a dress acting as the flower girl. Everything was perfect in this moment. And as the pastor told Izuku he can kiss the bride, Izuku pulled the veil back on Ichako first. He smiled with his eyes closed before opening them to see the face of the one man he wished to never see in this situation. You wanna tell my why the buck I'm in a wedding dress? Ah Izuku jumped back in fear seeing Bakugu instead of one of his two blushing brides to be. What are you doing here and why do you always come to ruin what little happiness I have this isn't even real asshole still. Look can we just all like chill for a second. The figure that was meant to be Najira pulled her veil up to show it was Kami. For reals though, formal. What are you, like some old geezer or something? Oh of course you'd be here why do the two people that piss me off have to be in my dream, the joy of one of the quirks I have. Bakugu smirked while Izuku remained in eye contact with him. So why are you here? I thought it was about time we ended this nerd. The way it was meant to be. You and me settle this the only way it should be. Izuku let a sigh out before answering. Kachin please. I know you and I have differences, but don't make me do this. If things keep going the way they are, I may have to do the unthinkable and put you down for good at this rate. I don't want to do this, so please just turn yourself in, and we can settle this without someone having to die or get seriously hurt. The same goes for you at Sashimi. I hate the two of you and that won't change. But hating you to the state I do and wanting to kill you are two different things. Please. As the heroes you both wanted to be, turn yourselves in so we can end this without someone else having to get hurt in the process. Bakugu and Kami only laughed at this as the scene around them turned to a dark room. Even with all the success and praise you're given, you're still that wuss I took satisfaction finding out they jumped off the roof of a building. You honestly think we do what we did and just stop. Like how dumb do you think we are twerp? It's time we end this Deku. You and me. I'll give you the info when you wake up. 
be where I tell you to. If not, I don't care who I kill to get to you or how much destruction I make to do this. Got it. Izuku let a sigh, realizing the childhood friend he knew was long gone. You know what, you're right. Let's end this once and for all. The two smirked as the image of a man was shown behind Bakugou with a sickening grin on his face as well. Should've guessed he'd be here as well. When I'm done with him, you're next AFO. I still need to pay you back for what you did to my dad. The scene went black, with the bright light of morning coming on Izuku's face to wake him up. While he pulled his body up, the feeling of the dream he had was beyond real. When he turned to the side, he found a note with a date and destination on it, saying don't be bucking late on it. Ahhh that wasn't a dream ahh Izuku's sudden outburst woke everyone up with a chako falling on the floor, Najire hitting the wall with her head, and Iri grabbing Izuku in fear of the sudden act. Ow. Why did you yell like that Izuku? Yeah, I was having a nice dream. Achako stated this while getting on her feet to notice her boyfriend holding a note with a pale look on him. Wacha got there. She grabbed the note to read it and noticed it was Bakugou's handwriting. H he had to have been here. That's the only thing that makes sense of all this. Who? Ajira asked, not understanding what was happening. Bakugou. Achako stated while presenting the note to her. While reading it, the blue-haired girl could only think one thing. We need to give this to the pros and get their input. At Night Eyes Agency. The four made their way to the agency with Ryukyu discussing a few things she's discovered about the recent investigation towards the liberation movement prior to the mentoring to find out about Izuku's dream as well. So let me get this straight, you were marrying Bakugou and Utsushimi in your dream? With them in wedding dresses? No Ichako. I was marrying the two of you in the dream and I found them under the veils instead of you two this is getting us off topic fast. The long and short of this is that he called me out and this is what he had placed on the nightstand beside my bed. Izuku passed the note to both heroes for them to see it was in a few weeks this fight Bakugou wanted. As far as I can tell, it's Bakugou's handwriting. Night Eye and Ryukyu discovered an interesting part of the date in the paper, as well as where it was supposed to take place. Before we discuss this any farther, we need you three to know something very important that will happen within the weeks to come. Night Eye expressed unease while he said this to worry the trio. On the day this will take place, the heroes will be initiating a raid of the liberation of Quirk's movement. During this, we will arrest the pros involved in this, the members who will be in a meeting as far as we know, as well as the man we have certain knowledge was the creator of the Nomu. Whoa. That's a lot of stuff happening in a day. The coordinates that you have given us are the coordinates of Jakku General Hospital. This is where we will be conducting a raid to end the creation of Nomu once and for all. Somewhere in a forest. Meanwhile in the forest a group of police officers including Detective Tsukauchi and retired pro hero Grant Reno were looking for an old ally of AFO, as everything was quiet. Are you sure this is where he should be? I'm positive. AFO had it implanted in my brain when I was being made that if anything happens to him, make sure Shigaraki and this Gigantamachi guy are safe. Shirakumo states this as the group followed him through the foliage. They came across what looked like a path worn into the ground. Is this man-made? Tsukauchi asked for Shayakumo to know what this was. This is him and it looks fresh. Get ready with the tranquilizers. The police held doses of tranquilizer in their weapons strong enough to take down a herd of full-grown African elephants. You sure we need this much for one guy? Shirakumo could only look back at the police officer and say, we'll need more than this, but this should be sufficient enough. When I say Gigantamachia is a huge threat if he's left on the field, I'm not joking. He's a being that is unlimited stamina, enormous in stature, and if things aren't bad enough, he could have killed All Might in his prime if he made an appearance. No cop could speak as they felt a chill down their spine hearing this. Not even the former number one in his best shape could handle this monster if he were to go out of control. This thought is scary even from a villain perspective. Dark cloud I see something moving Grant Reno states to the underground hero for him to make a black cloud to get near the tree lines. When he did, he saw the monster ride over the trees and show the top half of his body. He's here get ready as the police began firing at Gigantamachia with little to no progress shown that the tranquilizers were having an effect on him, the police officers were one by one shaking in their boots. In the way. The beast slammed its enormous hand down at the cops with them preparing for this to be the end. Ron Shirakumo came up to use his new feature of his quirk to create a warp gate and hit Gigantamachia in the head with his own hand. Good thing I found a way to use my powers as Kurajiri as well as I used to. The underground hero looked at his body to see it transformed into black mist Asai. But I don't like the side effect. Makes me remember that I was elaborate. The giant monster roared again for the cops to run out of the area. This ended in their eyes as a complete failure, since they couldn't do much in regards to the tranquilizers. They had to escape back through a portal Shirakumo opened. Let's go kid Grant Reno said with them both looking back and noticing that someone was walking up towards them. Seems this is where you've gone Kurajiri. 
This voice rang deep in both Gran Torino and Shirakumo's minds, before an unbelievable pain spring in the former villains. Ahhhhhhh Shirakumo fell to the ground struggling to keep his portal open. Our cloud Gran Torino started to use his shoulder as support to bring him into the portal while glancing back. He noticed ash blonde hair and red eyes, but the presence that was felt was undeniable. It was the same that he felt long ago when the death of his friend happened as well as recently in Kamino. The pressure of the symbol of evil himself. Afo. When they entered the portal. Shirakumo closed it and fell to the floor in pain. Is he alright several cops that were from the station they teleported to came to help the struggling pro on the ground. Kid. What happened? Pant pant I don't know. It was like something inside me was turning. Turning back to what I was before I regained my composure. You gonna make it. I I think. Shirakumo propped himself up while taking a few breaths. I don't know how, but I think being around AFO again overrides my actual mind and forces the Nomu half in me to take control. I can fight it, but I can't for long. This worried everyone knowing that this was possible and might be just as much for the other three if they got too close to Bakugu. Now came a new issue though. How do they stop Bakugu when he has a monster with the ability to take massive tranquilizers in him and not falter in the slightest? Midoriya, you're gonna have a hell of a time. Same to you Tagata. Chapter 62. When Gran Torino and everyone who went on the hunt for Gigantamachia returned, Shirakumo decided to call a meeting with Hanto, Tenko, Tui and Izuku to discuss the outcome of this mission. Some time had passed and Shirakumo was back at UA, where he saw Izuku sitting in the common room, hey Mr. Aboro, everyone had greeted him which made him smile, but it wasn't until his smile changed to a serious face. Sorry to bring this up on you all of a sudden, but can Hanto and Midoriya come with me? This is kinda important. Izuku and Hanto looked at the underground hero curiously before getting up. As they walked out of the dorm, Hanto started questioning why they're following him. So what's this about? Did someone find out about Spinner and Compress? Did we get a lead on Bakugu? Did the media find out about us? She whispers the last question for Shirakumo to shake his head no. I'll explain it when we get to Ia and Tenko. Izuku didn't know what it was, but for the somewhat carefree assistant teacher to be this serious, it had to be bad. When they got to the faculty lounge, they saw the other two underground pros talking with Azawa. Tenko, Tuiya, can we have a word? This is kinda important. Both nodded with Azawa staying just as another ear in the room, if it would be important to relay this information to the principal or the pros. They sat down with Hanto and Izuku on a sofa, Tuiya and Tenko pulled up chairs, Azawa stayed in a corner, and Shirakumo sat across the two almost second years. So the first thing regards an assignment I was doing. This information is somewhat debatable on if everyone needs to know, but it's part of why the second half needs to be said. Sigh earlier this morning, me and Gran Torino led a group to find a creature AFO had back when he wasn't part of Bakugu. A monster known as Gigantamachia. And trust me when I say monster, it makes that thing endeavor for it look like a cakewalk and is actually a somewhat self-sufficient human being. Wait back up a second. Somewhat. Izuku questioned this word as Shirakumo continued explaining about the beast. To be honest, he acts no different than a child that's emotionally disturbed. He was put in hiding due to Afo's orders and is committed to him, even if it costs him his life. We tried to take down the monster ourselves with a bunch of pros holding tranquilizers, but it wasn't enough. Uh, just how much trank darts did you have? Shirakumo looked at Tuya to answer. Enough to take down like 60 full-grown elephants with some to spare. So this thing is a walking dynamo that even tranks don't work well on. It gets worse Shota. How is something worse than that? There we come to our second problem Hanto. During the end of the raid. I ran into Bakugu. Izuku's blood went cold when he heard this. I don't know how, but my brain started splitting, and my mind was going back to what I originally thought before as Kurajiri. I I don't know how, but I think being around Afo messes with our minds and puts us back into the state we were in. Not a surprise. I didn't want to say something cause I didn't want to put more on everyone's plates, but I heard Afo whispering in my head. It wasn't bad, but he also wasn't in control. Hanto and Tuiya groaned knowing this is now a problem. So if Bakugu's around, we'll need to keep you four as far away from him as possible. Azawa said this while slamming his fist to the wall. When does this end even though I nearly lost myself in it, I found out something big and a way to maybe end this nightmare once and for all. Everyone looked at Shirakumo as he explained. A while back, Afo had it programmed into my brain to never allow a vessel he has to die before he transfers to a new consciousness. If we put this together, this may actually be a way he can die would make sense. But if that happens, then Tenko looked at Izuku who held his head down. We have no choice. If we don't take Bakugu down and out when Afo's inside him, then we'll never be able to end this. Izuku began getting up before Shirakumo said one last thing. Something was also talked about regarding a special quirk to hinder the transfer of minds. 
A quirk called Ofa. I don't know a lot about it, but it's our best shot to keep Afo from doing what he did again. Izuku waited a moment before thanking Shirakumo and leaving. Once Izuku had left the room he knew that it was only a matter of time that Katsuki would make his move and declare full-blown war on the world. The only thing that Izuku was thinking about now was to train to get stronger, so he'd have to inform all of Wana to begin training harder than before in order to be ready for what's to come their way. When he got back, Najire, Mirio and Tamaki were visiting for everyone to be in the common space. So what was that about man? Siro asked for Izuku to take a deep breath in. There's a problem and this is a situation that I need you all to understand and be ready for anything. What are you talking about? Hagakur was confused as Izuku started. To make a long story short, there's something controlling Ka I mean Bakugu. This is a sentient being that can jump from person to person and can only be destroyed if the current vessel dies before it can transfer itself. I just need to say the important parts. I don't have to go into detail of it being Afo or the fact I need Ofa present in the area in order to do this. Izuku thought this as he continued. This being has the ability also to bring out the worst in people. As you've already seen with the former league members and how they act now. But to make matters difficult, if they're in the presence of this entity when it's in control of Bakugu's body, there's a good chance we could see the revival of Shigaraki, Kurajiri, Dabi, and Toga. Wait. 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 So if Hanto, Mr. Aboro, Todoroki's brother or Mr. Shimura is around this whatever it is that's inside Bakugu when it's in control of his body, they could be villains again. Izuku nodded at Ishido. It's hard to explain, but we need to get stronger and be ready to face this entity. And if the situation calls for it, we'll need to take down our friends if they do waver and get them away from Bakugu's body. That's all well and good, but that doesn't make the fact we're killing a human being all the more easier I'm doing this Yaoi Rozu. Everyone went silent. This started with me and Bakugu, it's ending that way. Besides, he already wanted to end what's happening between us once and for all. Izuku walked up to Iri who gave him a hug worried for her father. But how are you gonna keep this thing from jumping bodies again? Todoroki asked for the green-haired boy to look at Mirio. I already know how to keep that from happening, and let's leave it at that. The blonde understood that this had something to do with Ofa to nod. Let us then work on team training with Class B then. If we can increase their strength, then that makes our troubles less obvious. Iida offered for the door to open to Tinko. I already asked and they're into this. The rest of us will also be jumping in. Let's just say, I'm not into becoming that megalomaniac I was again if I can help it, and I have a lot of good I need to put back in the world. The group marked today as the start of hell until the day they need to fight Bakugu and rid this world of the nightmare that lurks inside him. Four months later. The time since the discovery of how to defeat Bakugu and the dangers behind him to now were bitter work for the class, but the results were worth it. Everyone was far stronger because of it by putting their all in the internships, as well as doing a similar type of hell, they put themselves through in the training camp, along with reshaping their skills with their special moves and making new ones. They also learned the best aspects of coordinating their attacks, thanks to their class B friends, to make each member of the first years a force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, the pros had done their own work preparing for a day within a time span a spy of theirs gave. Right now, every pro in Japan practically was ordered to come into a meeting as well as every pro in training with a provisional to give one simple thought to everyone involved. War has begun. Everyone was explained how the liberation of Quirk's movement was organized behind Detenrit Industries and their CEO is the leader. This shocked many with even members of the pros being spies for the movement. The goal today was capture and defeat of every member of the Liberation Army and hopefully the end of the final members of the League as well as the faction controlled by Bakugu and Kami. Izuku was stretching in an open field with Hanto, Tuya, Tenko, and Shirakumo beside him. He only stopped when he began to hear shouting. Why am I in the front lines knowing this was Kaminari, he walked over to notice him beside Midnight. Just relax man. We're in the front because our job is to take down as many as we can and cause a hole for our allies to enter in from. Why are you so calm I'm not calm. This confused the electric quirk user as the aura around Izuku changed to that of sheer tension. I'm anxious. I've done raids for a while now being in the front lines, and the only thing that I can say is the silence is more uneasy than the fight itself. Right now, we're waiting for something to happen. Either they attack us first, or we start the operation. Either way, this is the only time you get to stay calm. Though you know you can't be calm because of what's going to happen. The answer somewhat amazed Kaminari before speaking. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. What does Jiru see in you? Just focus on the people that you're fighting for or want to protect. When I'm anxious, thinking about my parents, Achako, Najir and Iri helps me have an understanding of what I have to do. Gotcha. Word came over everyone's communicator for the police to speak. Endeavor has officially entered the hospital where the Nomu are made. 
The operation begins now Izuku went right in the second he heard this with the three underground heroes and his enemy turned friend classmate by his side. We're under attack a bunch of Liberation Army members came towards them for Tenko to get in front. Suffer the death grip. He touched the ground for the ground beneath the villains to decay and trap them in what looked like sand from all the other parts of the dirt, turning to dust. Today's gonna be the day we make names for ourselves. Ain't that right, Gensui? Dobby stated this for Tenko to smirk. A dozen on your left. Duya saw this to encase them in blue fire and keep them from going anywhere. You just got caught by the blue flame hero, remorse. A few more came for Shirakumo to go next and created a bunch of black clouds around some villains, he then used a warp gate to take them all down with his staff. Gotta admit, this quirk does have its uses. The villain was about to attack him before having his shoulders feel like something cut through the ligaments. Ahh many didn't notice Hanto come through with special fillet knives to force the villains to drop like flies due to the ligaments being severed. I might not have a good quirk to use here, but I'm still really good with knives. Nice work jangling. Now stay back. Izuku slammed his hands to the ground and shouted. Specified target gate of Hades thanks to his training, Izuku was able to use his ultimate move with more pinpoint accuracy to use the ground as a guiding post to absorb life energy out of villains while leaving the area completely intact. This allowed him to go a larger range to open a huge hole for everyone to get through. One by one, everyone was able to make a cut right down the middle and get to the mansion, as well as cut off every exit outside, so the only place the villains who had a meeting on this day in particular, with most of the members of the liberation movement present, was in the center of the battlefield. Alright. First wave, fall back Fatgum shouts this for Izuku, Hanto, Shirakumo, Tenko, and Tuya to stay. What are you doing? We have orders to head back. Tokoyami said for Izuku to look at his classmates. I have a different assignment inside. My group will continue on. The five left with everyone else falling back and the second wave coming in to try and finish the job. In an unknown location. Bakugu and Kami watched closely as the pros evacuated the hospital where the Nomu were created, as well as raid the fortress of the Liberation Army. You gotta admit, they're doing like an uber job. I guess. Bakugu's eyes were more on Izuku as monitors from inside the mansion showed him taking down villains, as well as making his way up the stairs. Meanwhile, Kami was watching Achikau and Najira evacuate civilians from the town in hopes to avoid any civilian casualties. Is it time to start yet? The ash blonde looked at his watch before smirking. Seven more minutes and the real fun begins. As the frame came out more, the two were sitting atop the communications tower of Tartarus with explosives lining it, as well as timed empty dischargers with timers on them. Let's see how Deku handles this. Stop me, finish off the current threat, or take care of a national crisis. I wonder what he'll do. Both laughed to themselves while watching the show in front of them take place. Chapter 63. As the war between heroes and the MLA had raged on, squads of heroes were each tasked with specific missions. Some heroes were tasked with storming the hospital. Other heroes were given the task to take down any and all opposition. When groups had broken off, Izuku's group was faced with a more specific task. Take them down a member of the Liberation shouts before being kneed in the face by Tuya. They keep coming don't stop we're almost there their objective was to rendezvous with their inside man hawks in order to take down the members of the original League of Villains to end the group once and for all. When they came upon the scene, they witnessed a man in a winter coat that covered his face attack the number 2 pro. I think we let you into our faction and this is how you repay us, it's revolting tch. Sorry man, just following orders like you are. The villain pulled the ice around the building to him and created a massive number of spears. And that is why you shall die to us. So long, Hawks. Before the villain could attack, Izuku shot the man with his siphoning shot to force him to look behind. You this was all he could say before collapsing on the ground. You okay Hawks. Better now. Haha <laughs> ow. The pro held his side to have Shirakumo head over to help. I gotcha man. As this occurred, twice began to try and run away with Toga holding a blade to his neck. Don't make this harder on us Jin. We don't want to kill you. The villain glanced at his former comrade with anger and disgust. Says you the four of you left us me, Spinner and Compress, didn't know what happened until you four walked out and we heard on the news you were given the death sentence, how do you think we felt knowing that the rejects like us were gone just like that? Hanto knew she couldn't hesitate, but she felt like she had to explain, we were given a second chance AFO corrupted our minds please surrender, and maybe you'll be given a second chance to a second chance. Twice began laughing as if this was a joke. People like us don't get second chances we're the garbage of this society and that's what they see us as Spinner came behind Hanto to only have the blade in his hands decayed by Tenko. This isn't what we came here to do. Please just give up and this'll end on a good note. I apologize Shigaraki, but it's too late for that. Compress came behind to turn the underground hero into a marble. 
We've done too much bad to wish for good. The villain was cut off by Izuku's sword, hitting his stomach and finding himself on the ground. The marble that was Tenko dropped to the floor and rolled over to Dobby. Too much damage to do good. What a load of crap. Izuku's choice of words angered twice for him to snap back. What the hell do you know kid you have a future that's worth a damn what do I have to look towards Izuku walk towards the copying villain to grab him by his suit and stare him in the eyes. The anger the green haired boy had was unimaginably known throughout the room. Not that long ago, none of the paths I have opened to me were accessible. I believed there was nothing good I could do in this world and decided to not waste my effort. I got the second chance to do good and I am struggling still. So when you say there's too much bad to do good, it pisses me off Izuku lost it on twice to start screaming. It's never too late to do the right thing he pointed at Hanto, Tenko, Tuiya, and Shirakumo. Those four have been our enemies just as long if not longer than you. They've killed people. More people than all three of you yet even after all this, they wanted to make a difference and do the right thing. So why the hell can't you? The three stood there silent with Tenko returning to normal and speaking up. We all did some bad things in our pasts. Things we can't take back no matter how hard we try. He pulls out a hand from when he was Shigaraki to remember his younger sister Hana. We did what we did and became the league thinking there was no other choice for us. But Catalyst here is giving us a chance. He has just as much reason to hate us as we would hate him. We attacked and hurt his friends. We also almost killed them on a few occasions. But even after all this, he still wants to help. So now we're all faced with two options. The former villain looked at his old comrades before speaking. Go to jail and wait out our lives in a jail cell until we die without anything to show for it, or try and do at least some good to make up for what we've done and whose lives we stole. Izuku calmed himself before sitting beside Hawks. Jinbubegawara. You had been given a record at 16 due to a motorcycle accident. That followed you to adulthood where you were let go because of it. Chuchi Aguchi. You were treated like a freak because of your quirk and lived your life as a shut-in. Atsuhiro Seiko. You're the great-great-grandson of Oji Harima. A thief that stole for the people with the ideology to show corruption of those who are in power and help those in need. Each one of you had a hard life up till now and I don't blame you all for hating society for this. But doing this won't change anything. It'll just be another corrupt society ruling it with more people than there should be hurt. Izuku held his hand out for everyone to look at his face. This is probably the only chance you three will have. Please let me help you. As a hero, it's my job to help those in need, and from the sound of what your friend said, you all need someone to help you. Tuya walked up to Spinner to pat his shoulder. It's okay man. Just let us help. Hanto went to twice who was shaking from this act. Jin. Please. I don't want to hurt a friend. Just let go of the belief you can't do good and let us help you. Shirakuma walked over to Compress next. Come on man. Just give in. This kid ain't a bad guy and really just wants to help those in need. There's no need to think so deeply into this. The three thought for a moment before twice fell to his knees starting to cry. Why you're not joking right? I can sniffle I can start over. Yes. Izuku replied with Spinner dropping his knives. Some Avenger I turned out to be. I can't even hold my ground for Stain's ideals when it would matter most. Stain had nowhere to go and unfortunately would never see the wrongdoings of his radical side. But understanding where he was right and wrong is an important part of growing as a human being. Compress was the final to pull his mask off and place it on a shelf. Alas. The final curtain to my time in the league has come to a close. It's time for the final bow as Mr. Compress. The seven members of the original league understood to accept the abolishment and try to do good. Meanwhile, Izuku sat by Hawks who was kinda bewildered. I gotta hand it to you kid, that took a lot of guts. Guts had nothing to do with it. These were people that just were dealt bad cards in this world. I'm just trying to give them the opportunity that they should have had at birth, but were denied. You're a one in a million kid. Don't ever let go of this side of you and try to help those that do. There's people on both sides that hurt. Hawk's cryptic message confused Izuku before the mansion started to shake. What's happening? It has to be Gigantamachia everyone out the group came out to see a giant beast begin running out of a tunnel from the ground in a specific route. We gotta stop that thing now Izuku pulled out his sword to pull the sword part out more to act similar to that of a sniper rifle. He aimed carefully at the beast that was heading out before being in a perfect position. Say goodnight you son of a bye. The green-haired boy was knocked away by a humongous hand, with the shot going upwards and missing its mark. Midori of the four shouted for their friend before a beast that looked like Yatsubashi. So it was you who interfered in Afo's plans Izuku got up to see the monstrous beast and smile. Riki Yatsubashi I presume. Or would you rather the name Redestro? And to think I believed you would understand the ideals of my predecessor? Seems I was wrong. Understand. I thought his ideals were crap the second I read them. To be honest, he got what was coming to him. 
You little brat the monstrous villain attacked Izuku for him to run up his arm and get to his head. Take this Max Ifo Izuku was stopped when Redestro grabbed his arm with two fingers to shatter the bones inside and leave Izuku in immense pain. Hhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
all heroes that can be spared, please make your way to the closest prison you can Izuku looked at his group trying to think what they should do before Ryukyu came flying down to everyone. Atlist. Hop on. We need you at the hospital. The young pro looked back at his group before giving one last order. Dark Cloud. Can you, Changeling and Remorse meet up with HQ and bring any pros you can to the prisons? They nodded for Izuku to hop on the Dragon Hero's Dagon size back to head out. In flight, Ryukyu and Izuku started speaking. So did you get your job done at least before this? Fortunately. We were also able to take down one of the heavy hitters and at least weaken one of the others before he came charging through. There was a silence before Ryukyu spoke again. Whatever happens, stay smart and don't do something dangerous out there. Trust me, the last thing I want to do now is screw this up because of my feelings. Chapter 64. Now that Gigantomachia was out of the picture the biggest threat now became the prisoners who escaped every prison in Japan, although when the war began their numbers were spread thin. The situation had become dire since many civilians could be caught in the crossfire. When Ryukyu had finally arrived at the hospital he saw many wounded heroes, so Izuku began treating anyone that he could. Just what the hell happened to do all this? From what I heard, they encountered several Nomu that were almost if not just as strong as the one that attacked Endeavor some time back. Izuku began restoring the pros that he could with Maruko taking most of his attention. He was able to restore and stop the bleeding from her injuries, but he unfortunately couldn't do anything about the severed arm. NNGH. Thanks kid. That quirk of yours really does come in handy. She started to laugh a bit before feeling immense pain from the act. Try not to speak. Save the energy I'm giving you to work on your injuries. When he did what he could, he kept going down the line with the sound of clapping being heard. Nicely done Deku. You got this far, but what about the prisons? Looking up to the hospital's entrance, he saw Bakibu with Endeavor being pulled by his neck in the ash blonde's hand. I asked some people to go help. Unlike you, there's still some in this world that give a damn if it goes up in flames. Adorable. Bakibu disappeared from Izuku's line of sight to re-emerge behind him. But right now I'd give more of a shit about myself if I was you. He kicked Izuku into the building to bring down the entire structure. You bastard the healed pros and Ryukyu came at Bakugu for him to send a massive shockwave to knock them back. The dragon hero however got in front to take the blunt and was sent into the air in a distance. That'll send you where you should be bucking lizard hitch. Izuku came charging at Bakugu again with his blades out to almost slice the ash blonde's head off. Now this is what I like to see, nerd that hussy face of yours when you finally lose your shit. But the Chako and Najire. The duo had been working with the pros to try and escort the civilians out of the area before hearing the call about the prisons. Najire. We're almost done here. Should we try and send some people that can fight or keep going as we are? Seeing a few of the other groups of pros and pros in training sending some people that can fight and being told by Ryukyu that she's in charge made Najire question what they should do. If we're thinking this right, the bigger problem would be if any villains escape and cause harm to people. But right now, we need to make sure this area is clear. If I was Ryukyu, what would I do? Look out her thoughts were stopped when she saw her mentor in her dragon form come flying and crash into a building. This isn't good. Everyone saw Ryukyu and realized just how dangerous things were if she was knocked back as a five-ton dragon. Ryukyu Najire went to her teacher before a black fire came and almost grazed her. Well this is like so cool. You all are here. That tote saves me the effort of finding you. Kami came over with a smile as an illusion of a girl bleeding and crying was beside her. Kakai. Ryukyu spoke with her face pale seeing the girl she knew. You weren't able to help me. Why did you become a hero when you couldn't help one classmate of yours? These words hit her hard realizing just how true they actually were. The illusion came at Ryukyu and seemed to be able to land a punch on her. Everyone that knew of Kami's quirk couldn't believe this as the illusion she'd make could only be made to be seen, not felt. Well now that she's out of the way, I think it's time for a little fun of my own. Kami started walking away with Achako enraged. You hitch way to Chako. Najire stopped her friend before she could run after the fawn-haired villain. We need to think smart instead of just running head first in. Now that Ryukyu was out of commission due to the powerful illusion cast by Kami she began to torch the city with black fire, it was thanks to Najire that Ichako didn't rush head first, so they had to figure out how to take her down. When Najire tried to seek any form of help from her mentor all she saw was a broken woman who kept muttering, I'm sorry over and over again. Just what is she seeing to feel this much guilt? She's seeing a mistake. Kami walked over to Ryukyu as she fell on her hands and knees begging for forgiveness. Seems the loser wasn't the only quirkless she could have helped in her life. Back when Ryukyu was about the age you all found Izuku, she had a quirkless classmate. The diary of hers was found and explained that she basically went through everything Izuku did. Though they were so similar, she didn't choose to help her classmate when she needed it the most and watched her commit suicide. Liar Najira lost her temper hearing this about her teacher. 
Ryukyu is a great hero she'd never do something like that then why are my flames affecting her and making her beg for Kakai's forgiveness. They watched Ryukyu cry, begging a girl named Kakai for forgiveness. Here's a little bit of info on my new quirk. Any regret or fear you have that you hold shame in, the flames amplify that and make you see that fear or guilt over and over again. She's probably living out the last few moments of her classmate's life on this earth, apologizing for not doing something sooner. Like Major said if you ask me. She probably only accepted training the twerp just so she could forgive herself. I doubt she even cared that he got this far. It took every fiber of Najira's being to keep from blindly attacking the woman in front of her for making fun of both Ryukyu and Izuku. She was about ready to speak when Ichako shouted first. So what? Amy stopped to look at the brunette as she continued. So what if Izuku was trained by her to help her guilt so what if she did or didn't do anything back in the past right now she's trying her best to do what the people she can save need and is trying to do what is right she can't change the past none of us can no matter what. All we can do is try to do better even when we fail and try to be who we should be in our own ways pushing that pain back on her and making her relive this nightmare won't change what happened and the fact she takes this to heart is proof that she wants to do better so she doesn't have to witness that scene again. Achako started panting for air with silence between the three. It only stopped when Kami began laughing. That's so pathetic ha 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 you honestly think saying that is gonna change much. What's next, showing happy pictures will turn back you and me good again. She kept laughing for a solid minute before calming down and looking at her illusion. I think it's time for us to show what they're dealing with. She snapped her fingers for the girl to turn into a nomu that seemed to be far more powerful than the normal ones they've faced. You see, I can't make an illusion that can touch someone, but I can put an illusion on someone that can touch another. Now. Kill them the nomu was smushed into the ground by a giant dragon hand. What? Looking up, the girls found Ryukyu shaking, but standing and ticked at Kami. Just how did you get out of that it wasn't easy, but I was able to make peace with my inner demons. Few minutes earlier, Ryukyu Pav. I watched the scene of Kakai fall off the roof for about a dozen times now. Constantly hear her say the same words and constantly try to console her. As this occurred, I began to lose my mind from the grief with the nightmare seeming to never stop. Please just let me help her hick just this once. Somebody anybody just let me help Kakai so I can let go of this I began breaking down and crying for some form of forgiveness before hearing a voice get to me. I'm sorry you had to witness this. I heard Midoriya say this and remember what he said. What I said. When that happened, I decided to walk up to the roof where Kakai kept falling from. I walked near the ledge to sit on the railing to see her look at me. I should have done something. I learned that though too late to make a difference. I know what I say now won't make everything better, but I truly am sorry. I held my head down before a hand was felt on my shoulder. Don't be. Looking over, I saw Kakai stop and sit down beside me. You're trying to make things different so nobody has to do what I did. That's all I wanted you to take from my death. I smiled through a tear while nodding. Ryuko. Thank you for telling my family that I was sorry. She disappeared for me to break down and cry over the forgiveness I thought I didn't deserve. Thank you. Sniffle I don't deserve it, but thank you for forgiving me. Back to present, third person Pav. As Kami was shocked that the dragon hero had broken free from the illusion she noticed Ryukyu's demeanor changed. I don't know how you broke free, but Kami couldn't finish her statement as Ryukyu began to charge. She was only stopped when Gigantamachia came out of nowhere and bashed through a building to make the dragon pro put her attention on him. Gravity Najir chan take her down she shouted this before being pushed a distance by the hulking monstrosity. Couldn't have chosen a better time to head over here. Kami says this while running away from the two. I'm not letting you get away from me Achako. Hold on to me. She does what her friend says for the two girls to float over the flames and continue after. Damn these two don't give up. After Ryukyu had given Najir and Achako orders to take down the enemy, they knew that the fight itself was going to be the most difficult they've ever faced. The pursuit of Kami was ongoing as Achako and Najir were dodging fire blasts while trying not to lose her. It wasn't until she ran inside the tallest building that both girls spotted Izuku making his way towards that building. When the girls landed they noticed that he was alone as they reunited Izu where's your team? Why are you alone? Izuku knew Najir would ask dozens of questions, but time was of the essence. Look I sent my team away to help deal with the escaped villains, but I also was told by Spinner where Katsuki was and I'm here to face him. We'll face them together. We were chasing Kami, and she's probably regrouped with Katsuki. One of them is bad enough. Now we need to take on both. Izuku was irritated now that this was happening for him to try and contact someone on his comlink. Lumillion. Can you read? There was a silence before a voice came over the comm. I can read ya. Where are you? I'm in a building near 5th and Raishi. I'm going to shoot in the air to help you see where. Me, Yuravati and Najir-chan cornered both Katsuki and Kami where we'll need your assistance. Gotcha. 
I'll head over there as fast as possible. He got off the comlink before pulling a flare gun out. When did you get the flare gun? Before everything started, I asked Yayoi Rozu if she could make me one just in case something bad happened. Smart. Izuku fired around in the air before turning to the girls. Alright. Let's try and stop those two and end this hell of a war. Both nodded for Ichako to make Izuku and her weightless for Najire to fly them up the massive amounts of stairs to see two different doors with the names Katsuki and Kami on them. They're trying to separate us. Izuku walked towards the one where he planned the ash blonde to be in before Ichako grabbed his wrist. This is a game he's playing. I know. But this is the only way we'll end this once and for all. This started with me and Katsuki. It needs to end with me and Katsuki. Kami I doubt can beat the both of you, but I'd rather take him alone, so I don't have to worry about either of you as much. The three didn't like this plan, but accepted it as is. Just don't do something dangerous, okay? Iri loves you. We love you. He hugged both girls before replying to Najire. I'll be careful. Izuku went upstairs to the roof where he noticed Katsuki staring at the destruction of the city. You know something, this was probably the most fun I've had. Better than when I was bucking Kami behind your back and she was making you her hitch. Izuku pulled his blades out to prepare for a fight. So you gonna say you're under arrest or some shit or are we gonna settle this like real men and not pussies? You and I both know that this won't end with you in jail. And with respect for the man who once wanted to be the hero, I ask you to end this now. The ash blonde couldn't help but laugh at Izuku. You honestly think after everything here, I'm gonna just give up. Come on. Let's end this the way it was meant to be. You and me the winner writes the way this story went with a loser being the monster in the story, Izuku charged in with Katsuki's hands glowing red. But Najire and Ichako. The duo found themselves in an office building, trying to find the fawn-haired girl before hearing something on the loudspeaker. Hello Ichako and Najire. I think it's time we play a little game. All you have to do is find me. I'll give you clues when you're close also. The two didn't like to play her games, but they began walking in and circling the floor. Let's take a trip down memory lane shall we? You see, I chose this building specifically because I had it set up to play mine and Izuku's activities together. Kami's voice was replaced with the audio of Izuku shouting in pain. Did I tell you to bucking speak back to me a little shit a video began to be shown on the screens of the monitors inside to show Izuku in his underwear, tied up with Kami atop him with a heel in his back. I'm sorry. She twisted her heel into his ribsage for him to let out more pain grunts. What was that? I'm sorry you better be. Because nobody will care for a little quirkless like you. You should thank me for even wasting my time with you. Both girls knew this was a ploy to get them mad, and in all honesty, they were pissed to think the same thing. She's bucking dead. Chapter 65. As Najira and Ichako were furious as they saw and heard recordings of Izuku being treated like a dog, their anger began to boil, but both girls knew this was just a way to make them go off emotions during the fight and make mistakes they can't afford to make. You know, I'm quite fond of the X I made on the little twerp's chest. As this was said, the two watched a scene of Izuku being tied up with a box cutter in Kami's hand. This was more for him to know who he belonged to. You see, he tried to ask for help before, but he went to one of my friends without knowing. She gave me the information and asked what it was about. So the X was for his punishment. The video showed the fawn-colored girl slowly go down Izuku's chest with the box cutter to see their boyfriend scream through a muzzle and tears fall down his eyes. I still am a fan though of Bakubi's treatment of him. He made sure none of my cuts on him bled out. The next small video played was of some old tapes about Bakugu burning Izuku with his quirk over cuts that were in his skin. The Chako was ready to lose it before finally seeing something that brought her over the edge. My favorite game with Izuku was Play God. The rules are simple, the person in power holds the fate of life and death in the other. They watched as Kami tied a leash around Izuku tied enough where they saw him struggle to breathe. He scratched at his neck as his head turned red to the point blood was coming out. Right when Izuku was going to pass out from the lack of oxygen however, Kami would release the collar just to bring him back and spit in his face. You bucking hitch Ichako ran towards the main room of the floor with Najire trying to stop her. Ichako calmed down trying to open the door, Ichako found that it was locked to immediately grab a chair to throw into the window that led into the office. Well that was a fun way to join in. Ichako jumped the window to almost get hit with black flames before tackling and holding Kami down in a fit of rage. What the hell is wrong with you Izuku never did anything to deserve this so why did you deem it right to make his life, a living hell Kami only smirked at the brunette while answering. Because it's fun. This was the final straw for Ichako. Not only was Kami the one to make so many horrid memories of Izuku known to him, she also did it just as a pastime with no real significance, only that it was for entertainment. She pulled her fist up to try and punch Kami for her to pull a trick and take out a small knife to stab Ichako in her shoulder. 
Ahh taking advantage of the confusion, Kami pushed Achako off while pulling a gun out from her side. Achako Najira tried to jump in as fast as she could with Achako maintaining her knowledge on GMA to remember the situation of someone attacking her with a weapon. She grabbed and twisted Kami's hand for the frond-colored girl to try and blast Achako point-blank with black fire. Ahh how do you like that hitch? Now let's see what your nightmares are. Achako's wrists up to her elbows were badly burned with other notable burns on her body before looking at Kami. Her vision began to blur seeing Izuku laying dead in front of her with Eerie in the hands of Overhaul again. No no we saved her she looked around to see she was alone against the villain. I don't care who you are I won't let you hurt my daughter Achako threw a punch that Kami dodged. So she's lost her mind, huh? Not a shock with this quirk. She went for the gun again for Najair to come in and tackle Kami down to the ground. You think I'm just going to stand here and let you shoot my friend? Kami tried to elbow Najair off with it hitting her nose. She backed off a moment for the frond colored girl to reach for the gun. However, Najair kept her foot before pulling away in hopes to try and prevent an escape. Get off me Kami kicked her in the face. She then reached for the gun again to hold it at Najair until getting punched by Achako, who was recovering from the flames before grabbing her hair. You want to screw with one of us, you screw with all of us. Although Achako was in pain due to the power of Kami's flames, she didn't feel it as much thanks to the adrenaline rush. She wasn't focused on her injuries as she pulled the knife from her shoulder and rushed Kami. While Achako was putting pressure on the fawn-haired girl, Najair knew this was a one-time shot, so she began to shoot medium-sized blasts at Kami while she was being forced into a corner by Achako. The attack was able to land with Kami being shot back through the opening to the room and out into the larger part of the floor. She was able to stop herself just when she was about to hit the glass window outside to narrowly avoid falling. Pant Pant you hitches think you've got me you've got squat both saw the desperate look in Kami's eyes to understand that she's losing herself to her emotions. Achako. Let's finish this. Achako nodded while her and Najair started walking out of the room. You think you've won. I'll end you both now. Kami let loose a large amount of fire to cover everything and smile. If you really think you're stronger than me now, then go ahead and try to pass this, I'd love to get a few laughs watching you skanks freak with your nightmares, Najair calmed herself thinking the worst thing that she could show, that would rile the blue-haired girl up to no end. I won't let that happen. She cleared most of the fire with her quirk for Kami to focus her attacks on Najair. This was countered by spiral blasts to hold them at a stalemate. You're nothing but a bully Kami. All you did to Izuku was hut him and treat him like garbage. You were no match for Ichako or me back then, and you're still not. Kami started to panic and take steps subconsciously backwards. She began to slip on some markers under her feet to lose her balance and start falling out the window. Lookout both stopped their attacks with Najair and Ichako using their quirks to try and save Kami. However, she blasted Najair with black fire while cutting the palms of Achako's hands with another knife she had. They watched as she smiled plummeting to her death at their own pain until she fell and made contact with the ground below. Both Achako and Najira looked away not wanting to see the image below. It took a few minutes for them to accept this to sit in a few of the chairs that weren't on fire in the room. Najair. Hold on a minute. Let me see your eye. Achako began looking around for some kind of first aid kit in the building to find one and grab some anti-burn medicine in it. She also cleaned and disinfected the burn just in case before Najair helped with her hands and arm. I. I can't believe it. She's gone. Achako glanced at her hands realizing that she couldn't save somebody and that they were somewhat responsible for her death. She didn't give us much of a choice. We did try to save her, but she didn't want the help. Neither liked this before Najair got up. Come on. We gotta give Izuku some backup. But Izuku. Izuku and Kitsuki had begun fighting with neither holding anything back. Thanks to all the quirks in his arsenal, the ash blonde kept Izuku on his toes with little to no room to catch his breath. Kinda sucks you can't use more quirks, nerds. But I realized something. That quirk of yours ain't so bad. He came charging at Izuku with his hand glowing red. I think I'll take it Izuku made a field of absorption right in front of him to pull away from Kitsuki in hopes to avoid his strike. His dodging all you can bucking do nerd tendrils began to come out of the ground to force Izuku to use his sword to cut them down. When he did, he saw multiple versions of the ash blonde tackle him to the ground, piercing his arms with spikes or bones that grew out, burning his back, along with having one twist his right ankle completely around to shatter the bone inside. Son of a. The real Kitsuki began walking over to his face with a sick grin. You know, I held back doing the burns in noticeable spots to avoid problems. He let loose a massive explosion on Izuku's head, cracking the pavement underneath. Now that I don't have a reason to, I'm gonna bucking rip you piece to bucking piece he kept blasting Izuku's head into the ground with his hands trying to absorb the fakes, only for him to feel nobody. Hologram copy. Does what the name says. 
Thanks to that though, I can make them hit you, and you can't hit back. Katsuki pulled his right arm back one final time ready to end this. So long, loser. Izuku prepared for the impact to see Mirio punch Katsuki in his face and dispel the quirk. Sorry I'm late buddy Mirio said as he helped Izuku up and noticed his body was in a horrible condition. Better late than never Izuku began to grab anything he could to absorb so he could be in decent condition to keep fighting. Take a quick breather, I'll keep him busy till you recover. You bucking extra Katsuki's voice sounded different, it wasn't until he began to turn his attention to Mirio that the two heroes saw a slight transformation happen, you'll be ashes under the soles of my feet. Izuku looked at the demonic form of his former friend to try and egg him on. You know something, this is an improvement. Katsuki charged at Izuku with Mirio attempting to hit him from behind. His fist was caught by the demonic ash blonde's hand bent in a disturbing fashion. You think I'm gonna bucking make the same mistake twice. Izuku pulled his chain out to wrap around Katsuki's legs to pull his attention off of Mario for him to phase through and punch him in the face, with Ofa infused in it. Off balance, Izuku was able to yank his chain and topple Katsuki down. Did that stop him? I'm not thinking so. Katsuki had begun using a strength enhancer to break the chain Izuku had to stand up. His jaw was dislocated and looked mangled from the attack. Adorable. He forcibly brought his jaw back into place and reformed back to what it was. Now you're gonna bucking die. Izuku came charging and sliced off the horns on Katsuki and give an X-lash on the ash. Katsuki came back up now angered to no end. I'll bucking kill you you damned nerd. Katsuki pulled his arm back with it mutating to insane levels. Strength enhancers X6, muscle augmentation, rivets, bone-like spears, drill knuckles, metallic skin, air cannon, blood crystallization. You both want to be the Buckin successors to All Might, then die the way he did the attack came blasting at the two, with Mirio getting in front to use Ofa to block it. His ability with it could barely go up to max for more than a few seconds, but this was the best he could do. The roofing under them began to crack with Izuku giving all the life energy into Mirio while holding him in place. Although Izuku was doing his very best to maintain himself and Mirio in decent condition to continue fighting, but if he siphoned more from the ground where they stood they'd fall through it wasn't until Izuku felt a massive boost of energy, he looked behind him to see Najira and Ichako with battle damage. Garden of Life Izuku released a small area around himself, Najira, Ichako and Mirio. His three friends were healed but still had some battle damage, while Najira shot a quirk at Izuku to top off his strength again. I need you all to leave now I'm gonna try to end this now we're not gonna leave you the ground below Izuku, and Mirio began to give way for Izuku to try and think of what he could do. Damn it all Katsuki started making his other arm into a blade to try and pierce Mirio with it. At the last minute though, Izuku threw his friend out of the way to take the spear in his right shoulder. Son. Of in the act, Izuku used his left arm to slice off Katsuki's that wasn't impaled into him. You bastard he twisted his spear arm to cause more blood to spill out of Izuku's shoulder. In the adrenaline rush, the green-haired boy charged through with a roof between them, Mirio, Achako and Najira being destroyed. To think I have to end this with you in front of everyone. I'd rather Najira and Achako not see what I'm about to do he grabbed hold of the spear arm to give all his might while absorbing as much energy for it to crack and break before kicking the ash blonde away. The momentum forced Katsuki to the ground and roll and nearly fall off the roof if his half-destroyed arm didn't grab a hold. Looking down at his former friend, Izuku finally let everything out that he was holding in. Why why did it have to be this way damn it you wanted to be a hero just like all of us and had every privilege to do it Katsuki struggled to hold onto the ledge while Izuku began crying in anger. We both wanted to be heroes, Kachin. Even though I would've never had the chance as a kid, I thought you could and would. I believed you'd be possibly the next number one someday. Help me Katsuki was struggling to hold onto the ledge with Afo trying to take over. Enough of this let me out and I will personally end I shut up the second he gives me his hand, the nerd's gonna get a bucking drill through his skull. Katsuki's hand that was lost began to regenerate and transform into a drill. As he said, Izuku knelt down holding his right hand out. That's a dot once a loser, always a loser Katsuki stopped when he felt something impale his heart. Looking down, he saw the hand Izuku held out have his second buster sword in it. I figured you'd try something sneaky like this. The final nail in my coffin for our friendship was you stabbing me in the chest with Kami. I think it's only fitting that the same happened to you. The weight of the sword made the unstable handling Katsuki had on the roof be lost and him falling back. Goodbye Katsuki Bakugu. May our paths never cross again. These were Izuku's final words before Katsuki fell several stories down to solid concrete. At the bottom of the building. Ryukyu was able to subdue Gigantamachia thanks to Genist and some other pros to start heading to give her protochet some assistance. To help, she had Azawa and a few other pros to help in close quarters. As they neared the entrance, the dragon hero found the lifeless remains of Kami. What the hell happened? 
she must have fallen. I just hope the girl died from the shock and not the impact itself. God knows that's something nobody wants to feel when they die. As they spoke, Gang Orca pointed out something falling from the sky. They got away from the area for a splatter to happen and then found the remains of Katsuki atop Kami. Dear God. Ryukyu looked up to notice Izuku looking down at the remains of what happened. I'm sorry that this had to happen Midoriya. Please do not blame yourself. Epilogue. Two years have passed since the war and the members of Class 1 have finally graduated. At the ceremony, Izuku was given the offer to speak on behalf of his classmates to explain how happy he was that everyone with them today passed and are moving to the next stages in life. In a way of speaking, Izuku was proud to be where he was but still held remorse in himself. At the reception, Izuku sat at a table with his daughter Iri, two now soon to be wives Achako and Najire, Ryukyu, and their parents. The scene was nice, but Izuku had something else on his mind that he needed to do. Hey mom. Do you mind watching Iri for a little bit? I need to go somewhere with the girls. Sure sweetie. Just don't make me a grandmother just yet. The three blushed before they walked out. What was that about? Haiwa asked with the guys at the table trying to think about what this could be. Izuku wants to do something that he needs to show Najira and Achako. Ryukyu said this remembering what he said to her. What is it? It's nothing dangerous, right? No. Think of it as, Izuku closing the book on a chapter of his life to finally move forward. Cryptic. Hisashi said while passing Iri a cookie under the table for her to take it and start enjoying the small snack. Thank you Izuku Midoriya. Helping you has indirectly helped me. Let this journey reach its end today and have a new one open up. But Izuku and the girls. The three left the party and walked some distance in the city of Mistafer. So where are we going? It's a secret. Izuku smiled at Najire while they walked down the sidewalk. They came to a building that they went in and walked towards the roof. Izuku. Is everything okay? Achako asked for them to reach the door to the roof. Yeah. I just wanted to do something as kinda a symbolic way to end what I began years ago. They walked to the roof to find an old note that looked like it succumbed to the elements. Irony that's here still. Izuku unfolded the paper and gave it to Achako and Najire. When I was about to end it all, I did one final thing before leaving. I wrote an apology letter to my mom. The two read the note to realize just how bad the state of Izuku's mind was back then. The whoever finds this. My name is Izuku Midoriya. Chances are, I'm dead. Due to years of constant abuse of not being born with a quirk, being made a whipping boy, and being told that I could never be a hero or someone worth much in the world, I decided to end this. If you could, please tell my mother Inko Midoriya that I'm sorry that I was born defective and that her life would be better off without me in it. I didn't do this to hurt her, I just couldn't take the pain anymore. From, Izuku Midoriya. Welp. Here we are again. Izuku jumped the railing to look down at the street below. Izuku both girls panicked before he held his hand out. From here, everything looked so. Small the first time. I don't get it, but it's different now. Remembering back to the day he was here last, Izuku saw himself actually happy he got to choose a way for himself to go, and nobody would tell him it was dumb. Granted, who would have questioned the dead man? It took so much pain for me to finally accept the end I had. And it's thanks to that, I met you too. The girls remembered how Izuku fell into their lives to glance over when they heard pebbles falling. It took everything I had to find somebody back then that actually cared for me being dead. But now this feels like a lifetime ago. Izuku. What exactly are you here to do? Izuku glanced over at Najire to answer her question. I'm going to do what I didn't have the courage to do the first time I found myself at this ledge. Izuku lifted his one leg up to move over the railing and back to safety. Live. I took an easy way out and that life I was given was squandered cause of me choosing to die. I'll never get a third chance, so this was more to say the book to my origin is over. I'll never forget the past for as long as I live, but I'm done living in the past. He walked up to both Achako and Najire before kissing their lips. Consider this my life after death. The two walked off the roof and returned to the party, understanding that their life as where they started from is over, but the family they have and their adult lives finally began. Author's note. Silver. Thank you to everyone who continue to support this story it's been an honor to collaborate with stilllwell 3 if asked would I collab with him again, I would say yes without hesitation. The only question I have is would Stillwell03 be willing to collab again? Stillwell? Yeah. Honestly I had some fun with this too so I'd do another collab as well. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this and checks out some of the other work we do. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.